You're listening to Megiddo Radio. Megiddo Radio is a radio ministry of Megiddo Media. For more, visit our website at megiddoradio.com. That's megiddoradio.com. Good evening, everybody. Welcome. This is Paul Flynn with Megiddo Radio for the 22nd of June, 2017. Thank you all for tuning in. It's an odd time of the week to have a radio program. Don't, don't, I don't generally do this on a Thursday, but as I was talking about on the last program, when I was dealing with Mark Driscoll, I mentioned that there was a topic that I really felt burdened to cover. Not excited to talk about this issue, if I'm being completely honest, because there's a lot of... Uh, I don't know what to call it. It's a mess at the moment. And there's times I've been speechless over this last two weeks. I'm talking about the kind of what I would call the James White Yasser Qadi controversy. This is not a new dialogue. Um, I think people might not be aware when the dialogue took place. It was took place last January. So it kind of went under the radar for quite a while. Brandon House of Worldview Weekend brought it made it a big issue. We need to get past Brandon House, whatever might have been said or not said by people who may oppose White. I just pray that people will look at the issues, look at the talk. This is what we want to do. Um, I'm joined today by Mark Fitzpatrick of Iron Form Baptist Church, a good friend of mine, a church I was a member of, many good memories there. We don't live that far away from each other. And um, I really wanted his input on this. And uh, Mark, thank you so much for joining us on the program. Be here. I mean, sadly, it's not on better circumstances. And I I really wanted to get somebody on. And I was just like, this has really made me upset. I'll be honest, sick to my stomach watching this. I I take no joy in this. I'm not somebody who generally wants... To be in the limelight, if I'm being honest, there's a lot of topics I generally say, okay, that's been dealt with by other people. Let's leave that alone. And uh, controversy is an ugly thing. I, I, one of the things that grieves me is there's sides being taken and there's a lot of ugliness. And I just pray by the grace of God that anything we might add to this conversation, if you want to call that, would hopefully bring clarity. We want the scriptures to be exalted. We want people to be followers of Christ. Not any man, not me, not Mark, not James White, not anybody else. Um, Mark, what are your initial thoughts on this whole controversy? Well, very much already what you said, Paul. Um, there's absolutely no pleasure in uh, this and there's no joy in in talking about these things. Our our desire is to to stand for truth. Uh, Our desire is that the people of God would honor the truth and live by the truth and especially when it comes to these kinds of issues because Not only is the church looking on, but the world is looking on in many situations. And we need to be so careful that we do not confuse the people of God and even those in the world regarding our view of the gospel, regarding the importance of the gospel and the importance of the primacy and the sufficiency of the gospel. My great concern in all this is that the gospel takes second place to our relationship to the world and to the enemies of God. And and that's, that's an unspeakable thing. Uh, unspeakable in the sense that it should never even be something that has to be talked about. There should be faithfulness to the gospel first and continually. I mean, I just want to be, when we st- we're we starting off here, and there's going to be, by the way, there's going to be no Megiddo TV version of this. This is just going to be completely audio. 
and I hope to cover this issue over a couple of another couple of shows over the next couple of days. We'll see how things go with that. One of the things I want to emphasize is we are all for engaging with the Muslims. We are all for sharing the gospel for them, to them, talk to them, evangelize mm. them, um, do everything you can to witness to them, bar giving them a platform, mm. bar praising false teachers, bar exalting mere men who deny the, Christ and books like the Quran and the Hadith and all this kind of stuff. Like, if if we just look at the poster for this event, this was the event um, last January 24th. Now, we're not talking necessarily today about what happened the next day, which was in the mosque, in the Memphis mosque. However, there's similar issues with that. Include that if you want to, but we're going to be dealing with this today. Uh, James White and Yasser Qadi, um, who is a kind of a Sheikh Imam, and the title of the, the dialogue was Christians and Muslims Agreements and Differences. I mean, I don't know why this wasn't even brought up earlier. He's got such a big audience, but agreements with Islam, they have a different Jesus, they have a different Moses, they have a different Abraham. But how is the talk presented? Now, I just, please, hear this out. I am going to attempt, as to the best of my ability, over the next few shows, we're going to talk about as much as we possibly can today. We're going to try and play as much of this as possible, all the way through. So all the accusations of taking out of context, I hope, will go away. Because we're just going to play it, and pause it, and comment on it, and uh, see what the real issues are. I have been looking forward to this evening for a very, very long time. It has been my desire to engage in a dialogue like this, and when the opportunity came that I'd be coming into this area, uh, I contacted Dr. Cotty and I, I put out the call, uh, and the church here was, uh, was so kind to respond and to uh, join with us in providing a place for us to have our conversation this evening. I want you to understand uh, what our motivations are this evening in, in coming together. This is not a debate. Some of you have seen uh, debates that I have done around the world. Uh, this is not intended to be a debate. Uh, we are going to, of necessity, discuss differences that we have. Um, the thing that makes this wonderful and the reason that I sought out Dr. Cotty, aside from the fact that I have learned so much from him, uh, over the years, uh, that he's been a primary influence in my study of Islam. I am a student of Islam, and I have learned much from him. But the reason I specifically sought him out is because I sense in him such a kindred spirit on the other side of the chasm that divides us in regards to our theology and our beliefs. He is I think that's a good place to stop, but there's a lot of places we could have stopped along the way. Mm. What do you think of that, Mark? A kindred spirit. Now, people have argued to me, oh, it's on the other side. He's not talking about a kindred spirit, kindred spirit. Mm. Yeah, I think it's, to say the very least, unwise. It's not necessary, and it, there's a far greater possibility for misunderstanding and damage done perceptibly. It was such a thought. And we, we couldn't imagine for a moment the Apostle Paul, uh, for example, using such language with the enemies of the cross. Because it is, as I said, not only unnecessary, but it's actually dangerous. It's dangerous terminology. We're talking about, I think you've already said, a man that has a different Jesus, hates the Christ of the Bible says that the people who believe in the Christ that we preach are, are going to hell because we believe in the, in the Lord Jesus that we believe in. So therefore, to say this is a kindred spirit is completely unhelpful as a minimum and highly dangerous in reality. Yeah, could you imagine Paul or the apostles or Elijah 
Could you imagine Elijah saying to the false, the, the priest mm. of Baal, oh, we have a kindred spirit. Oh, mm. I see a consistency mm. with those Baal worshippers mm. over there. Mm. Could you imagine no. that? No. no, not at all. Not I, mean, at all. I mean, again, I, we're gonna, again, we're going to try and play it all the way through as much as possible. I think, can I just uh, bring in as well, I, I was actually reading, you know, just on the whole thing of dialogue and debate, Martin Lloyd-Jones, when he when he done his lectures to the Westminster Seminary back in 1967 or 9, I can't remember, but he actually talked about this whole issue and his view was very clear. And I, I'm not 100% myself on this issue of mm. where I actually stand. But Martin Lloyd-Jones was very strong that we don't dialogue or debate the gospel. We, we proclaim the gospel. We don't ask people's opinion about the gospel. We don't treat the gospel as a, an alternative position. We proclaim the gospel as the only position that man is to believe and receive and repent from any other position they hold. The problem with dialogue and even debate is that it puts the the other person's view, at least from the point of view of the uh, initiating the debate, as almost an equal position. No, I completely agree. And I mean, I mean, I think there's legitimate debate that can happen within the church. Um, you can have, say, you know, debates about baptism, debates about um, maybe eschatology, mm -hmm. things that may benefit from the... But when you're kind of taking enemies and, and like people who blaspheme during you know mm. debates, mm. you've got. I mean, look, we're not really talking about debate. If this was a debate, we wouldn't even be talking about this. We might disagree with it a little bit, but it would be quibbling. I think you know, there's mm. people with different views and things like that. What we're talking about here, it is not a debate, and it's set up as, and as we're going to see in a minute. I mean, it's not, no. we're, we'll play it before I talk anymore. He's a consistent Muslim. He believes what he says. Just want to comment on that as well. A consistent Muslim. Now, I just want to point out some of the inconsistencies. Now, James White is big on consistency. It's a, his mantra. Okay. The consistency here, right? James White says that this is a consistent Muslim. Now, in other videos, he says, okay, it's a lie to say that ISIS is Islam as a whole, but he all, you know, you have to put in a certain qualifiers, you could say, or things like that. But he takes a kind of a weird middle view. He doesn't say it's peaceful either. He's kind of got this view of, well, you can come up with whatever you want, provide whatever context you want. And that, that was the, essentially the debate he had last night with uh, Robert Spencer on... Uh, the Line of Fire, which is Michael Brown's radio program. But, but I digress. He's talking about consistency. He's presenting this man as a consistent Muslim when he says there is no consistent Islam. Is that... Do, does that I'm just saying, right? How is it possible to be consistent on something that's inconsistent? <laughs> I, 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 James, if you actually listen to this which I never usually say because I think most people who I actually do critiques on usually don't listen to my programs because I've got a small enough program. But the thing about it is, you know, I, I, does that, mm. you know, like here's mm. a consistent modism. There is no consistent Islam. Here he is. Mm. It, but if that's true, they've all got different views and you can come up whatever you want and you have to ask them individually. And I'm going to finish my rant in a second. Here. <laughs> um, if there's no consistent Islam, why bother getting anybody to talk about true Islam? Mm. Because according to James White and his view, you might as well get a thousand Muslim sheikhs in the room and they're all going to disagree with each other. But that's not true. We know that's not true. And the people who go through the Islamic texts, every single major school, we're not talking... I mean, <laughs> I'm sorry, but I'm just... It just drives me crazy, but um, let's continue. He wants to seek for consistency amongst his people in his own practice. And so when you have two believing people, one Christian, one Muslim. Yeah. Can I comment on that? Please I, do. I think that's even worse because in scripture, believers are only believers in the Lord. This guy's an unbeliever. Yeah. He's not a believer, you know, and to call him a believing person or a believing people, whatever in that bracket is is unbiblical and it's actually against the gospel because he's not a believer he's a 
a rejecter of Christ. He's a rejecter of truth. He's a rejecter of the Word of God. But but, but James said he wasn't compromising. But mm. isn't that what J.I. Packer probably said back in mm. the mid-90s? And also, I was reading today, actually, just to go back over, like, you know, Peter Kreeft's uh, ecumenical jihad, mm. undeniably an ecumenist. Mm. Look, we're not saying that James White is an ecumenist before mm. that is <laughs> said, okay? We're not saying... we're. I'm saying, I'm not speaking for Mark here, but he's going in that direction. We're not saying that he's arrived at the terminal yet. I pray that he will turn back, but I think the ship, unfortunately, is sailing and he's going in that direction. I'm not saying he's there, but it's dangerous. It's like, you know, you could say Arminianism is a road to Rome, but it's not mm. saying Arminianism, yeah. Arminianism is Romanism. Or no, we're like going to see clearly throughout these two uh, dialogues is that there are many times when the foundation is laid for cooperation. Yeah. Cooperation against the secular atheistic world. And clearly, for anyone who knows scripture, knows that that is completely against... What fellowship, what yeah. cooperation yeah. hath light with yeah. darkness. Yes. And they have talked repeatedly, not just in the first talk, the second talk. Yeah. I've gotten a lot of, a few emails saying about Please listen to the first and second talk. Well, I have. Mm. The second mm. talk's not good either. Mm. I don't think I'm going to go through that one as well. I think ma most of the major points will be covered in this one. But th the same problems are in both. Just because he talks about the Trinity in a mosque doesn't give him a carte blanche to do whatever he wants outside of that. You don't... It's... I mean, I want to be careful with my analogies here, but, you know, it's like to say, I'm going to go to, you know, to sin in order to share the gospel. Well, am I going to go to, I don't know, a brothel in order to share the gospel with uh, prostitutes? You can't say, I'm going to sin in order to share the gospel. Mm -hmm. You're going to say, if the Lord pre presents opportunities, biblically, there are ways to reach Muslims without doing this. Free preaching. Um, go, you know, maybe go outside a mosque and hand out tracts. Why you know, not do that? One of the things that um, Dr. White said in his uh, response to the objections after these two, and he done a response, I, I keep forgetting the name of the um, the video, but it's it's on YouTube, and he, he basically makes the, the, the point or the accusation that people who are against him don't evangelize Muslims. And, and that's just, you know, that's a very big generalization. I've seen you talk to a number yeah, of Muslims yeah, in Dublin yeah, after yeah, street preaching. Yes. And the thing is, I don't want to get down the route of virtue signaling. We do this, we do that. Mm. But, I mean, the gospel is supposed to go to everybody. I, mm. I, I don't like this kind of, okay, you can have specific books. Richard Bennett does great material that's more specifically. Mm. They, and I'm not saying that, that there's no place for that. But the gospel is to go to everybody, every mm. creature, whether you're atheist, whatever, whatever. We don't have an interfaith dialogue with an atheist. Mm. Well, I don't believe anything you say is true. Okay, well, you know, <laughs> this isn't going to go very far. But we wouldn't dream about doing it with an atheist, mm. the atheist of the faith. You mm. know, like, um, mm. uh, would, would you dream of doing this with a Buddhist? I mean, mm. where does it go? Mm. And one of my major concerns, right, is this. Not about James White, it's about the precedent this sets. Mm. Mm. If this is said to be acceptable, this will spread. Mm. The you know, like the ECT, Evangelicals and Catholics yeah. together. Again, I'm not saying it's the same thing I'm, because it was different. J.I. Packer signed a document which basically compromised the gospel, saying we're sa saved by grace. Mm. Um, we're saved by grace. It doesn't say we're saved by grace alone. They mm. leave out the solas and they even admit, at least Richard John Newhouse did, that they left it out on purpose. It was kind of on purpose. So basically, they, com they basically committed to what Rome believes. Mm. Now, I'm not saying that this is the same. It's not. Mm. Mm. But it has the potential to go in this direction because it started off with interfaith dialogue. And and, look, it, and it has, it does have a similar, um, a sort of a, a similar reason for, for existing. And that is back in the 90s, and I remember I, I met Packer and challenged him face to face over his position. Uh, and the reason for ECT was because of all the, the strife, even in places like Latin America, where there was such strife between the evangelicals uh, and the Roman Catholics and, and so on. There was the, this view that 
we're not enemies. We have a common enemy. Yeah, yes, exactly. It's, it's the same. I'm trying to think of a. And better Peter Kreef said exactly yeah, the same thing yeah, in Ecumenical yeah, Jihad. Yeah. And yeah. I mean, what? Like, here's the thing, right? If 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 James White had said after this, after some of the, you know, maybe they have a point. I need to pray about this. I need to think about this. Mm. I would have like, okay, fine. We'll give mm. him a bit of space. Okay. Mm. He has doubled down. Mm. And what I think. Even if he was in the right in this, hmm. the behavior and the doubling down and the mocking and the demeaning and the calling insanity, that's just made it far worse for him. Hmm. I just think. But um, I digress. Let's go back to the talk. <laughs> Come together and say, we need to discuss not only what divides us, but also where do we have similarities? How can we live in the same community? And the most important thing is this. If we do what, we, if we do what I hope happens this evening, we're going to do something absolutely unique. It hardly ever happened. Sorry, can I just comment on Please it? Please do, yeah. How are we going to live in the same community? Christians don't or should never need unbelievers to come to an agreement with them on how we're going to live together because the Christian is meant to take the initiative in that we live Christ. That's our calling. We don't have to agree with unbelievers. That's not to say there couldn't be practical issues between neighbors. Fair enough. You know, next oh, time, yeah. you know, no, none of us are making but, that argument. Yeah, but, but this is not. And I, and I think some of the people on on James White's side uh, argument here are bringing it down to that. But this is on a much bigger scale. This, we're, we're talking about this is on a, on a, on a, a world scale. Can you imagine mm. how much this is going to impact Reformed Baptists? Because mm. again, I bring it back to the evangelicals and Catholics together because that set a matter, massive precedent. Mm. And he's talking about evangelism, right? Mm. He's saying that this will affect mm. Mm. and if, affect, you know, if this happens, this will increase evangelism. What has happened since ECT? Mm. Evangelism to the Roman Catholics has gone down mm. because oh, yeah. we're all working together. I, like, I know from personal experience, right? When I was working with, and this is not the same level. I was saved a few months and I remember I was working a project and there was a lot of Roman Catholics involved in the newspaper. Mm. And, I fe- and I was sinning doing this now. I, in a number of times, I could have shared the gospel in order, the common project we were all working on. It was a political thing. Um, and I still, to this day, regret it. You know, like I, they were giving me merry medals and oh, it breaks my heart that I did this. Mm. But in order just to get, get the newspaper, it was, a, it was a political activism thing that we were doing. We all agreed on it. Mm. Look, we're, none of us are that strong. None of us are that strong mm. that, oh, mm. I'm strong enough in my faith Okay, I was a very young believer at the time. It doesn't excuse what I did. But there will be compromise. I think mm. we have to kind of go, we are weak in our flesh. Mm. And if we say, okay, you and me, we're getting together in this. That takes precedent over everything else. If we say, right, Muslims and the mm. Christians are going to get together mm. on the family. The family will take precedent. Mm. Moral, mm. Mo- quote, unquote, moral issues will take precedence. And the gospel will take the back seat. It yes. has to in yes. order for agreement. You cannot say, you cannot say that there will be more evangelism in such mm. a situation. There will be less. Yeah. So, and I'm still talking about pragmatic. That's a pragmatic argument. It's not mm. the best mm. argument, mm. but it just doesn't work. Mm. So. And that is to... Just sorry as well. You know, the <laughs> fact that he said it, it's unique. Mm. Um, unique. Did the reformers ever do such a thing? Why are only the liberals doing this? Hmm. Two communities where unfortunately there is a lot of fear on both sides. There is a lot of misunderstanding on both sides. Can I? And Please do, yeah. This thing of fear keeps getting brought up. Um, I, I don't fear Muslims. I, I don't you mean you're not a nasty bigot who hates them? No, I'm not an Islamophobe. <laughs> <laughs> I have no issues uh, with generally with Muslims. This argument that's constantly been used that, that conservatives fear Muslims. This was the exact ar- argument that I should. That, can I mention uh, politics? Like, like remote? I have taught <laughs> I've taught Muslims in my yeah, classroom yeah, and I've got on pretty yeah, well with them. Yeah. And I've at odd times shared a bit yeah. of the gospel with them. I have to be yeah. careful at work. I can't be like yeah. in their face because yeah. I'm teaching them English. Yeah. But I don't fear them. Yeah. Talk away yeah. to them, well, whatever yeah. the case. Yeah. Sorry, yeah. continue there. Yeah, it's, it's one of the arguments that liberals often use in the political sphere against conservatives, that we're afraid. And this is the exact, the exact argument that James White's now using, that, and many people, that, that we have a fear, that we don't have a fear. What we have a fear of is a fear of disobeying God. 
That's what we were afraid of. Why does he sound more and more like CNN? I don't I don't want to make that sound like, you know, kind of a cheap shot, but I've listened to CNN many times over the years. I know the way they talk. And I was shocked that the conservative Christian... Look, I know he's had this kind of view for years. I've listened on and off to the mm. Divide Online for years. If I'm researching mm. an issue, I want to know what James White says, and I'm mm. curious. Mm. I, I want to check out different points of view and mm. things like that. And, and sometimes he says something, go, hmm, that's interesting, mm. and I rethink my focus. I've read his book mm. on Islam. I actually mm. think it's not a bad book. I think mm. it's a good book. Um, so... And I've heard his views over the years, I, but I, I said, okay, we disagree on this. He's not very strong in the whole ISIS issue, but he's not a political commentator mm. and he's not an expert on this. Mm. Now he's putting himself up as an expert. See, he's not mm. talking about the Trinity. If he's stuck to the Trinity, he's got strengths, I think, when it comes to mm. debating. You know, mm. Talk about the Trinity. Talk about monotheism. Talk mm. about, yeah, you don't have to bring up, like he doesn't like bringing up the whole Aisha thing. Okay, mm. you don't have to bring it up, but please, I would say this as well. Don't say that it was very common at the time because it sounds like, exactly like the Islamic uh, whitewashing of it. Mm. Again, it's not wise, okay? I'm not doubting his intentions. Again, it might be very good intentions. I'm, I pres- We're going to presume here, mm. all the way throughout this program, that he's got the best of intentions. Mm. We don't know his heart, okay? But we're, we're judging his actions here, mm. what he is doing. Mm. Okay, we're not judging what he's done for the last 20 years, since 1995 or, or 1990, or his work with the Mormons. There's an old expression, isn't there? It's not how you start, it's how you finish. Mm. Yeah. How many people, is, and there's people, like, if you look at Saul's life, I'm not comparing to Saul now. Ugh, I mm. always have to put a caveat in there. It's, it's kind of a bit annoying, but mm. I'm just, <laughs> look, I'm not comparing him to Saul, but I'm just saying, Saul looked wonderful at the beginning, mm. but look at him at the end. Like, Often, right, there's so many great men, even modern day, um, there's a lot, I'm not going to bring up names, but we know a lot of people who got really big, were on television, mm. they looked really faithful, and then at the end, I don't know what happens, maybe it's overconfidence or whatever, people often slip. So, I'm not saying let's overly criticize people, let's jump on them as soon as they make the slightest mistake, I don't like that either, this is not a slight mistake. This is Islam for crying out loud. Would you have, could you imagine John Calvin sitting down Mm. and saying, hmm, I I would like to have interfaith diet. We don't quite understand the Turk, as they would Mm. call him back then. Could you imagine any of them doing that? Mm. And and I think it's important to say as well that we're doing, if I can put it in this language, our little bit to not only help the the church at large, but to help James White and, and to to challenge him and to protect him from going down a road which will, I believe, we believe, harm his ministry and will... If I hated James Mm. White, which I don't, Mm. I would just let him go. Mm. Because the road he's going down is a road to destruction. Mm. I'll be honest here, right? Like, you've you've had James White speak Mm. from your pulpit. Mm. Um, You've... Uh, th- you, you didn't host a debate he had with the Muslim years ago. That was UCD, was it? Yes. Or yes. Trinity. It, was it was the Christian Union in, in UCD and okay. Trinity, yeah. But you've had him preach for, for yeah, your pulpit. Yeah, and spent time with him, and he's very affable, a nice man to spend time with. And sometimes I've, he sounds funny, you know, sometimes yeah. go, oh, that, yeah. that was really yeah. funny yeah. We stuff. drove around the Dublin Mountains together, and uh, we had a good time, but uh, that's by the way. But, but uh, No, but like, we're trying yeah. to make out that this is not personal, yeah. but... Uh, I just think if you're on the same side as him, mm. he's lovely. Mm. But if you're not, if you disagree with him and things, and that's... that's Yeah, I mean, that, that, that's really what concerns me. And I, I raised this actually a few weeks ago. I didn't even know about this dialogue. And mm. a few weeks ago, I, I can't remember if it was my Facebook page or somebody else's. Uh, I, I And I put it down as, as a personal impression that uh, Dr. White, James White, seems to have much more generosity towards uh, opponents outside of the church than he does of w- within the church. Uh, and that concerns me, that he can talk about, the, you know, fundamental, well, I'm not a fundamentalist, I'm a Reformed Baptist, but he can talk about fundamentalist Baptists in, 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 in very disparaging ways, and, and that concerns me. Mm. Uh, and again, I'll say, if, if, if Dr. White is going to listen to this, that I would appeal to him personally to change that. We're not talking for him to be nasty to Muslims. This is not what we're saying. Like, be you know, he can be friendly to Muslims without saying, you know, um, 
well, as he's going to say in a second, mm-hmm. Dr. Khan, you are honest with your presence. You can just say, you know, if you're saying having a debate with a Muslim, you know, you can, you can be friendly to them, say to them, I love you enough. You want to be, let's be direct. Mm-hmm. I love you enough to tell you you're going to hell and you need Jesus Christ mm-hmm. in the most loving way. There's probably a better way mm-hmm. to say it than that, mm-hmm. maybe. Mm-hmm. But it's the truth. You love them enough mm-hmm. not to say, from your perspective, from my perspective, let's be clear. Mm-hmm. There is one way. The Quran is, it's either the word of God or it's completely demonic. Mm-hmm. There's no, oh, you believe in divine mm-hmm. revelation. I believe in divine re- revelation. We, the scriptures do not speak in such terms. Mm-hmm. Find me the passage. It's not there. Mm-hmm. Um, but let's continue. We mm-hmm. need to play more of this. Mm-hmm. As a Christian, I want to see doors opened. As a Christian... I want you, as if you are a Christian here this evening, to not have fear of the Muslim people, but to have love for the Muslim people. I want the Muslim people to understand. And how do we show love? Hmm. We share the gospel with them. Hmm. Seriously, when I, if I'm, if I'm lazy in my faith, which I often hmm. am, you know, hmm. to my shame, right? When I'm at work, I'm tired, and there's opportunity, and you don't take it. Hmm. There's time to talk to them. Shame mm. on me when mm. I don't take that mm. opportunity, right? But when I am most direct with that person, you need Christ. Mm. Mm. Okay, I am not going to start off the conversation with kind of stuff mm. that's sometimes said. Oh, I'm not going to start off talking about Aisha. I'm not going to say mm. Muhammad is the devil and all this kind of stuff, whatever else. I'm going to say you need Christ. You need a substitute. You, your own filthy rags will take you to hell. Mm. I said that to a Muslim student of mine once. That's, you know, I, I, I wanted conviction first. You don't, you try to bring the law mm. to bear. Because I asked him, what do you believe? And mm. like he's doing here, I'm not against dialogue. I'm not against a one-on-one dialogue. This mm. is a completely fallacious straw man. It's, mm. it's infuriating. Mm. Okay. It's infuriating. Okay. I ask Muslims what they believe. I don't know what the Muslim believes. I don't know if they believe every single word in the Quran. I'm not saying, oh yeah, you're, you're Takiyah. I don't know. Mm-hmm. <laughs> we don't, I'm, I'm going to ask the Muslim. But I'm not going to say, hey, Muslim, here's the platform. Go teach your lies to the rest of my class. And mm-hmm. I'm talking about an English class mm-hmm. here. I'm not going to give, I'm talking about an English class here. Here's my situation. I'm not going to say, here's the opportunity to whatever. Mm-hmm. Does that make sense? And that's an inning. No, let's not get superstitious about the building. You know, that, that's what pe- people are saying. But you're teaching before the saints. The whole point of this is you're mm-hmm. inviting Christians to. The second night was more about getting Muslims. But I think it was exactly the same crowd no, from what I, what it, I can see as well. Yeah, it seems to be James White's sort of mentality of, you know, his, his, his logic in this is that if we're nice enough to Muslims, we're going to, you know, enable a lowering of the guard on their on their part, and that it's going to make it easier for us to present the gospel. That seems to be the the reasoning. John one thirteen comes to yeah. mind, not of the yeah. will of man. Yes, I mean, yes. and and he more than anybody yeah. should know that verse, yeah. having. Yeah, yeah. yeah I, if we are th- going to be pretty yeah. consistent Calvinists yeah. here, yeah. Um, we obey God. God will save his elect. Mm. We're to be faithful in every opportunity. Yeah. If the door gets shut because we're being faithful to the truth, yeah. okay, that door is shut. We go to the next open one, regardless of who it is, mm. whether it's a Muslim, a Mormon, whoever else. Yeah. Someone has said that what you win them with, you win them to. That was James White. Yeah. And that was it. <laughs> yeah, actually, yeah, it's like... I thought yeah. I heard that a long time ago, but... No, that's yeah, James White, actually. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> So, I mean, and well, then that needs to be applied here because yeah. if we are we trying to win them to our friendliness, to our lack of fear, to our love? No, we're trying to win them to Christ. I don't mean this disparagingly, but it sounds a lot like um, Jack Hiles. Mm-hmm. Jack Hiles, um, when I was in fundamentalist circles, I was in fundamentalist circles for a couple of years, right? And... Um, I mean, I've still got a lot of love for people of, you know, and you miss a lot of them. But I remember one of the most destructive leaders. Again, I'm not saying he's exactly like Jack, Jack Hilt. He's not. Okay. 
But just just hear me, people, before you turn it off. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Seriously, I can I can hear the the comments coming. But Jack Hiles would say you have to win them to you, or words to that effect, and mm. then win them to the Lord. You have mm. to be kind of become friends with them. So awful. I'm not saying that you are antagonistic to them. Mm. I am not saying you shut the door mm. the second that they say something a bit off. Mm. You know, there's a no, time. Yeah, there's a time to witness, right? Yeah. But if it's there, but there comes a time, right? There, there does come a time. So you share the gospel. But there talks about, you know, as in Matthew six, pearls before swine. If they start mm. mocking the gospel, openly blaspheming God, mm. it even happens a debate. Sadly, we, you know, not, cast not your pearls before swine. There's a time. Christ did not speak at every single opportunity it was afforded to him. Mm. There was times he remained silent. Mm. And there was times he spoke. Paul asked for permission to speak mm. at times before mm. the crowds. Mm. Mm. You look, you, you try to respect the authorities involved, but you always, you don't just barge through in order to mm. share the gospel or mm. use different methods. We don't have to sin to share the gospel. Mm. God will provide the opportunities to share the gospel, and we are then to take them and share the gospel. Mm. I mean, we're supposed to believe in the sovereignty of God, are we mm. not? Mm. And both of us, you know, if you're not aware, are like, I'm a Reformed Baptist. Not a Reformed Baptist. <laughs> <laughs> I was oh, going to say, great. <laughs> you're you're you, like, you're back. You've come back. <laughs> I was a Reformed Baptist. Um, that's sort of another topic for and another then, day. And then he slipped. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I slipped into reformed uh, Presbyterianism. Oh man, that that will be uh, that will be played. It was worth um, coming just for this moment. Uh, <laughs> Mark is a reformed Baptist. We're still good friends. <laughs> but um, and the thing, like we're both Calvinists, we're both reformed. Our confessions are very very similar, barring a few points mm. that. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> baptism and church government mm. and, and the such like, but there is a wonderful unity there. But if you're going to be believing in the sovereignty of God, which Reformed Baptist, well, I'm going to say consistent Reformed Baptists do, which consistent Presbyterians do, mm. Reform, you know, like mm. I mean, you know, not in the P not in the kind of uh, PCUSA kind of understanding of the term, but kind of um, what am I getting at here? Are we going to trust God to open doors, or do we feel like we have to kick them down with new methods? Mm. I really, I really worry about that. This is completely unique. Being unique, and like he's talked about earlier, is not wrong in and of itself, right? But you just have to kind of question just a little bit. Why did nobody for two thousand years do this? Why can you not find any examples in history about this? Why can you not find only the liberals? It just, it just can. Can we at least express concern? Can we mm. at least do that? That he is unwilling to hear any of the criticism whatsoever. We're all insane, apparently. That's it's, it's. I mean, go to his Facebook. We're all insane. We've we, we've got a hate fest against him. Um. Anyway, but you know, it's ugly. I mean, it's just, it's just really, really ugly at the moment. I guess. Like my plan, look, the plan for the next few Megiddo radio shows will probably try and go through more of this as much as possible and try and play as much of this in the show over the next few times. But my, my, my intention here is to, to lay out the ground. I, I, by the grace of God, here's where we stand, okay? Well, then we're going to move on because don't get involved in a... Mm. Look, he's been told. He's been warned. I think there comes a time we've got to move on. There's got other topics we've got to talk about. But I digress. Let's go back to uh, hmm. the talk. And that we care and that we want to have dialogue and that we're not seeking this evening to sweep our differences under the rug and say they don't matter. Dr. Qadi cannot present an Islam that is just simply one view amongst many. I believe in divine revelation. He believes in divine revelation. So hmm. how do we get along? How do our communities talk to one another? The sad fact of the matter is that conversation isn't happening. And I want it to start tonight. Just to comment on before I forget it, every single time, it doesn't mean he's not being truthful or anything else like that. But just because the fact he says, oh, we're not compromising or we're not sweeping our differences on the road. Number one, if, if Dr. Cotty has no intention of repenting, mm. dialogue over. No, well, that's number one. Again, I think the the... The agenda, and again, this is where James White keeps saying, 
I'll, I'll be honest. He keeps using that, that term, and, and that's good. But in order to be honest, it, surely when he says that the reason is how can our two communities get on together, if that is the agenda, that is not the gospel. That's not the primary no, thing no. we're supposed to be worried about. And if, if James, and we're not against it, that. We're not no, talking no, about no. infighting all that. Yeah. No, no, but it, being honest, and again, I'm not expecting James White in this situation to say everything. But surely, be, and I think later on, Dr. Caddy says, I'm not here to convert anybody. That's not honest. I, I don't, if, if, if Dr. Caddy is, is a true Muslim, he has to be everywhere to convert people. That's the whole point of being a... But, but, uh, but if he's saying, yeah. right, okay, you're not going to budge from our position, yeah. your position. Yeah. We're not going to budge from our position. Yeah. Yeah. What's the point? Mm. Yeah, they're diametrically opposed. I mean, yeah. there's there are no agreements. No, because this, between Islam and and Christianity. No, this is a suspending, a practical suspending, of the, and because in the gospel, God has given His final word. It, it's repent and believe, and and the word of God tells us that if people will not accept that message, we are to brush the the dust off our feet. And, We're and, supposed and look, to move on to the next yes, person. Yes. And look, maybe that person will be will be their heart will be softened yeah. later and come yes, back to them. Absolutely, absolutely. I'm not saying yeah. I mean obviously uh, Dr. Caddy, Dr. White have a good relationship and I'm not saying James White should, you know, walk away from him and, and say I'm not yeah. gonna talk to you again. But but the prob- my problem is is that the agenda seems to be something less than the gospel. Mm. And that is how do we get on together? Now, and later on, Dr. Caddy says, you know, we, we're all different when it comes to the judgment of God, but let us, let's not make this world a hell. You know, so mm-hmm. it's, it's, it's the temporal, that's the governing principle here. It, it's how do we get on this world? And I'm not saying, you know, well, we all want to get along with our neighbors. Oh, yeah. We all want to get along with each other. Um, but when it comes to the, those who've been called by God, as uh, I believe James White is, to, to preach his word mm-hmm. and to do what he does, um, his calling is to preach the word of God and primarily the gospel, and and that always must be central, rather than either dialogue or debating. You know, it's anyway. Sorry. Yeah. 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 And look, mm. I mean, it's often been said as well. I just want to clarify as well. The gospel was kind of mentioned in the first talk. I think you know, people would kind of say that it wasn't, but it became a footnote. The gospel is never to be a footnote anytime when we're talking about God. This has to be front and central, but we're going to try and play mm, through more yeah. of this and play a good chunk of this. And I want to start here. So uh, if, if you're a praying person, pray that we will have understanding. No distinction was made. One of the things I really worried about is you got Muslims and Christians in the audience. It's a Muslim Islamic kind of uh, talk, and I don't want to be stopped every five seconds. It's really hard, though. <laughs> Forgive me. This is. Uh, We're going to play a good it, chunk. And... <laughs> we play a good chunk, and I, I play about two seconds of it. Oh, boy. Anyway. Uh, cons- <laughs> consistency falls, Len. Anyway. So, anyway. Um, but. Oh, what was the point he made again? Oh, my brain's gone. But he. Oh, I'm going to have to go back over this again. Yeah, yeah. Where I got completely distracted. <gasps> to start tonight. And I wanted to start here. So uh, if, if you're a praying person, pray. Oh, yeah, but the praying thing. A praying person, pray. Look, eh, if you're a Christian, pray. Mm. Um, if you're a Muslim, repent <laughs> and pray, cry out to the true God. There, it can't be like, you see, I'm sorry, but you've created a situation where there's utter confusion. And there's going to be a Muslim saying, oh. White saying to me, oh, they're intelligent enough to know that. Oh, they're not. That was another question I had um, in my mind watching the second, because Dr. Caddy at one point says this is a mosque and there will be prayers at the end of, of, of this session. Now, I don't know what happened. We don't uh, know. He might have walked yeah. away. He might have had nothing to do. I hope. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I, like, we, you know, we don't. And I, we I, don't I, I, I wasn't trying to imply yeah. that. Um, you know, what happened at the end? Did all the Christians um, mm. leave and then the Muslims pray? Probably. I, I, yeah, I'd I, have to imagine we'll, that. We'll, yeah. hope, we'll hope for the best because um, yeah. I didn't see that in the, in the second talk. There was, there was mentions of there were prayers at the end, um, but there was even a problem with the initial greeting. I mean, it was like, it was just implying straight away, we, we have the same Abraham, we have the same Moses, we have the same, you know, that, that was the second talk now. There's not much, you know, people say, oh, look at the second talk. The second talk's not great either. Mm. Now, and, to be honest, and, if the second yeah. talk just happened, I would raise my eyebrows and I'd, be, I'd have concerns. 
about the second talk alone, but it probably wouldn't do this. But this is far worse. The setting yeah. is far worse because he yeah. is the one being the presenter. Here's yeah. the one lavishing praises on him yeah. and saying, hey, here's my, he talks about this later, here's my mentor. And you're yeah. going to hear what he says now. And, and he facilitates. Oh. And again, if I can just give an overall per perception and we'll, we'll get to this, is that, for example, I, I would say that in the two situations, there was a, a, a gravitas when it came to the Islamic side in the sense of what I mean by that is that there's no way James White, I believe, would have or would have actually got away with misquoting a verse of the Quran. No. Whereas Dr. Caddy in the in the first um, misquotes, now he does it on purpose and... He says it's kind of a John, joke. John yeah. Tr you know, but if James White had done that with the Quran... No. And yeah. and here's that's the problem. There's, they, there's they more can of get a, a, they there can get away more, with more of a reverence on both sides. Yes, for the Quran. Oh, absolutely, a, a respect, a, an overt respect for the Quran. Almost a, we talk about fear. There's a fear of messing around with the Quran. Now I know what he's going to yeah. say. He's going to say, oh, "I say it's inconsistent the whole time, and it's not the word of God." And yeah, but but that's the perception. But it, you see, here's the thing: just because you say something. Um, that doesn't honor Christ in one place, doesn't ex you know excuse it because you've honored Christ in mm. another place. Mm. I mean, you know, you got to get that across. But let's <laughs> let's hope. Let's play a, uh, yeah, a let's ten play second it. chunk. Yeah, hopefully <laughs> that we will have understanding. That as if you're a Christian, I want you to hear what this man has to say. I want you to understand why he believes the things he does. What his life is like here in the United States as a Muslim. And I want you to hear, especially when he talks about what Islam is and what it is not and who speaks for Islam and all these types of things. I want you to hear so that we can have better communication with one another. That's why we're here this evening. Uh, I hope that's why you've come here this evening. Please, uh, no audience reactions or participation. Uh, let us do the, the conversation. We're gonna have the audience questions later on. Uh, but I very much appreciate you coming here. Dr. Qadi is a Muslim scholar. He has written books. I, for example, uh, was very, very uh, happy to receive from him uh, a 16 CD series uh, called Light and Guidance. Uh, and it tremendously helped me to get a basic understanding of, you know, sort of get the lay of the land. He has, he is an expert in Hadith. I think I've sort of scared him a little bit by telling him that uh, sometimes in, in August, in Phoenix, where I live, I have to ride at literally 2.30, 3 o'clock in the morning, if you can even survive. And I have distinct memories uh, at that time in the morning uh, of riding my bike uh, in the desert, listening to him lecture on Hadith sciences. Uh, I think even the Muslims will go, that is really weird. Because I, I don't even think they do that. Uh, can you get no, people? They don't. No, they, they don't, don't do that. No, I didn't think so. <laughs> <laughs> That's really weird. Uh, but he is an expert in, in those areas. We're going to be talking about a lot of these things. We're going to be explaining what we're talking about. We want to bring everyone along. And hopefully at the end of this evening, when we uh, go over there to have refreshments, um, the Christians and the Muslims together will be able to have conversation. Uh, and many of the misunderstandings that separate us right now will be laid aside. There won't be any compromise because we both believe very firmly in what we believe and what we profess. If that's true, there's no compromise on the Muslim side. If you're saying to the Muslim, yeah, you don't need to compromise. How is that exalting the gospel? Mm. You, you're at, you know, I know you're not saying to the Muslim, you're calling them to repent. Mm. Surely the whole point of anything we do, you, you don't like, am I going to say to a Muslim when I start evangelizing or, or talking to him, I don't expect you to change your views. Mm. Could you imagine if mm. I said that to somebody? Mm. If I was just even a member of a church, you'd probably and rightly take me aside and go, no, no, you're wrong here. Mm. <laughs> mm. I, I note that he left out the word fellowship. I think in the, in, in the initial, um, in the flyer or the advertising, the word fellowship was used. Um, I remember there. And, and even, uh, maybe I'm wrong. I think in the end, yeah, the description, I think in uh, somewhere there, the word fellowship, I could be wrong. Maybe yeah, I'm... it just says here, um, if the event is sold out, uh, join us for an evening of discussion and dialogue between Dr. James White, Director of Alpha Megan Ministries, and Dr. Yasser Qadi, Dean of the Al Maghrib, I probably mangled uh, that, trans uh, that uh, uh, what do you call it, pronunciation, 
institute where they discuss the agreements oh, you boy, and mm. disagreements that Muslims and Christians share. I don't know any place where there's agreements. But anyway, uh, Dr. White and Dr. Cardi will be on stage mm. to open an unmoderated dialogue. Stay with us afterwards, time of hospitality and fellowship. Yeah, I, I, I had a problem with that. You know, a time of hospitality and fellowship between Christians and Muslims. We don't have fellowship with, with Muslims. Now, probably people will listen to this and think we're really nitpicking. That's not nitpicking. John's epistle, our fellowship yep. is with the Father and with his son, Jesus Christ. We don't have any fellowship with But it means with partnership. It yeah. means a cooperation yeah. between two parties. Yeah. In a spiritual venture, we're not saying with our Muslim neighbors, we can't say, okay, you know, the bins are going to be taken out in the morning. We, mm. Oh, I can't do that because you're a Muslim. Mm. You know, that's mm. not what we're saying. Mm. But you're talking about a spiritual venture. You're mm. talking about, you're putting the Quran mm. in such a place, at least in the minds of some, that mm. it's on the same level as the Bible. He's, mm. oh, your perspective is this, and mm. my perspective is this. Mm. Again, where would you see this? In the scriptures, anywhere. You know, you know, demonic uh, doctrines of devils are supposed to be rebuked mm. openly. Now, if somebody's repentant and open to the gospel, mm. yes, that's when we're friendly. That's when we're encouraging them. Mm. You know, if, if a Muslim comes to us with questions or whatever and says, oh, I've got a lot of questions, I'm too sure about this. Obviously, you don't like pound on the person. You, you go through the, you know, the, the scriptures lovingly. But if you've got a hardened person who says, Okay, I don't mind listening about the Trinity, but I'm not going to compromise. I'm not going to budge. We we had um, a Muslim come along to our Bible study a number of years ago, and um, he was using it as a, Yusuf was his name, and he, he was using it as a uh, a way of getting the Muslim faith. And I, I pulled him aside and said, Yusuf, you're very welcome to the Bible study. We love you. Mm-hmm. We, 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 we want you to come to the Bible study but you're not allowed to promote the Islamic faith. Because at that point, we had it in, but, our, in our home. But would that not make you a horrible bigot? <laughs> According to... But, but, yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. This, You see, this is what I'm talking about. Mm. If this is... I know people are saying, oh, let's, let's move on. We're sick of hearing it. Yeah, I'm sick about hearing it mm. too. A mm. lot of the critics are even sick about talking mm. about it. I know we're, we're tired of talking about it, so we'd love mm. to talk about something else, something more positive. I'm actually probably going to do a bunch of shows that are just positive stuff right after mm. this because <laughs> seriously, this is depressing to talk about. It. I don't get any joy out but, of this. But going back to that fellowship, uh, again, yeah. it, it was said recently, just to, this morning, someone wrote on my Facebook page, you know, uh, James White is is a clever man, and 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 it, it concerns me that someone like James White would would use the word fellowship on the promo. For now, now we don't know if it was him that wrote. It that. Yeah, him. okay, fair enough. We don't know, but I'm sure yeah. you know. Uh, but that concerns me. Yeah. I, I that that is a big concern. No, it is. That, I mean, know. look. To be honest, if if I was ever going to do a debate with a Muslim, I wouldn't do it personally. All right, mm. but if I was going to do a debate with a Muslim, I'd like to read the description of the mm. debate and make sure there's mm. no confusion mm. whatsoever. Read over mm. it. I know he does a lot of them and all this kind of stuff, but read over and make sure there's no confusion. Mm. Make sure you know this is where the Christian doctrine stands. Make sure you realize that there is no fellowship between light and darkness. Mm. That there's no confusion. That mm. you are being clear on your presentation of the gospel. Mm. No. That's sowing confusion. And anyway, look, agreements. Like he knew about the time. Agreements? They have a different God? Okay. Yeah, you might say, okay, we're both monotheistic. So what? So are the Jews. I mean, they don't believe in the same God. I mean... The gods of the nations are idols. He's Allah... I, I, but, I, I, but isn't it insulting uh, to God to say that there's any similarity between a monotheism? Because that's probably... If you want to say, okay, here's an agreement. We're both monotheistic. How dare we say that there's a similar, there's an agreement there, mm. that we agree on the family? Look, I'm not going to get into all the, <laughs> all the messy, disgusting things that are mm. taught in Islam. They don't really believe in the mm. family. I mean, mm. okay, yeah, there's there are honor killings. If you if you dis- disgrace, I'm not saying every Muslim family does this, but you go and leave the Muslim faith. Mm. It's in a hadith. I, I can't remember the exact hadith off the top of my head. You know, wh- whosoever leaves his I- I- Muslim faith, kill him. Mm. Apost- the de- the, that's one of the most commonly n- well-known deeds out there. If somebody leaves the Islamic faith, th- it's the death penalty. Mm. So, look, 
I'm going to get into that in another time because that's a whole other issue, whether Yasser Qadi is a radical mm. and all this. I'm saying let's pretend he's the most peace-loving, nice Muslim on the planet. Mm. Let's pretend he is exactly what he says, right? That's what we're pretending for this show as and, much and, as I can possibly and try. Let's say, let's say this clearly. Um, from a spiritual point of view, the, the nice Muslims are more dangerous. Mm. Because people can think their niceness is an evidence of the truth of the, of their profession. Because just as the Lord Jesus said, they we would be perceived to be the disciples by our love to one another. You know, it's it's a powerful thing. In fact, being nice is more powerful in the hearts of minds of of people. We we know that. Um. So, and and when the the children of Israel went into the into Canaan. They were told to destroy all the people, and there was a vast difference. the The Amorites were the the people who lived up in the hills, and they they were the rough people. But then you had some of the the pro- properly called Canaanites, the civilized people. But all were to be um, destroyed as the enemies of God. Um, and the spiritual application of that, it really doesn't matter whether a Muslim. But, but would that is, make it, us hateful? You know, no, you know, no, you know no. if you were going to take that same standard. Why don't you sit down and interfaith dialogue with them? Mm. Maybe they didn't understand each other. Mm. You see, that's what happens when you just say, I'm not interested in God's ways mm. of sharing. The, yeah, the message might be Trinitarianism and mm. you get to share the Trinity, mm. Mm. but you've surrounded the Trinity in disobedience. Mm. You've surrounded your faith to God and saying, here's how, I mean, look, come on, we should have love for our brethren we should be gracious towards them. Um, I am not saying we should be harsh and unyielding, like the Quran says, towards Christians, but that, of course, we love... But what about the atheists? What about the Buddhist neighbor? What about the Catholic neighbor? Why does the Muslim get privileged status? Well, partially because they're, you know, a lot of them are violent. <laughs> um, I'm not saying the majority. I actually mm. think it's a minority. Mm. When I talk about Islam being violent, I'm talking about the original text. Not every single Muslim, just like every single professing Christian, doesn't mm. believe what the scriptures say. We're talking about exegesis here. We're not talking about what every Muslim believes. I'm not saying, I don't like, just to be clear as well, when people kind of put really horrible comments, you know, like, let's nuke all the, the Muslims or something. That's mm. horrible. Oh, yeah. That's yeah. deplorable. But no, yeah. no, yeah. that's not a spirit of, that's not a spirit of Christ. You know not what spirit that is of. That's, that's horrendous. That is to be rebuked. Of course mm. it is. But it's not either or. Mm. It's not like, oh, if we reject James White's method, which is being implied, we're fearful. We're hateful. We don't... One, of the power, one of the powers of the gospel is that it recognizes there's only two classes of people in the world. And that is the believers in the Lord Jesus Christ who are saved by grace through faith in him alone and everybody else. Mm. The problem, one of the problems with this is if we are treating Muslims as Muslims in a very sort of, you know, singular sense, we're, we're removing one of the pillars of the gospel presentation, which is basically saying to Muslims, you're no different than the Buddhist, you're no different than, than the, the Shinto or, or whatever, you're all the same. And you're not you're neglecting. All unbel- you're all unbelievers. And like just to, again, I just want to, because I can hear some of the things that might be laid back at this, just to nip it in the bud, you're not saying that there's, a, you know, like, if you're talking to a Jewish audience, you don't have to talk about creation. You mm. talk with to an atheist. Mm. You, yeah. you say, you know, you, you talk about, say, um, Romans, where it talks about, you know, if you know from the creation, you're without excuse. You mm. know that there's a God, but you reject yeah. him. We're it, not saying no, that there's no. little, little things. It's Romans 3, but yeah. there's no difference. That's in that sense, they're all sinners. Yeah, yes, and, and Muslims need to be, in a sense, the carpet needs to be pulled from under their feet. What I mean by saying that is that they need, just like Roman Catholics need, to realize that their religion is empty. If we, the, if we the, the religion the, is completely empty. If we get the catechism and show, you know, or expose something about, I don't know, you know, anno- the records of annulments as opposed mm-hmm. to, you know, that's why mm-hmm. the divorce rate is so low in Roman Catholicism. Do we hate Roman Catholics when mm-hmm. we do that? When people do take the time, there's some horrendous things in Hadith. There's mm. some horrendous things in the mm. Quran. Um, when we do that, that's not... Say- okay, some people might do it out of spite. Mm. It's like, oh, look, look, well, yeah. And, you know, if it's not for the sake of 
maybe warning people in love. Okay, it's in the wrong spirit. We don't know their intentions. But is it true? Is it factual? Yeah. Muhammad um, uh, married a six-year-old, consummated the marriage at nine. And here's the thing. It might even be younger than that because of the lunar calendar and everything else like that. Eh? Now, I, I know it's going to be called an emotional argument. This man is the, he is the standard. He is, he is to be followed. Muhammad's example is to be followed. So why? And something that's that vile, that disgusting, that perverse, is being given this veneer of anything close to what the Bible is talking about. It's, it's not, not, oh, it's inconsistent. Yeah, we can say the Episcopalians are inconsistent, but I think, you know, probably a lot of them are saved. I don't know how many. But it's just, it's just disgusting. It, mm. it drags down God Almighty from heaven and raises up this perverse warlord from the 7th century. Mm. Look, and if I'm talking to a Muslim, I'm not going to, okay, I'm not going to go straight there. Maybe I'll, you know, eventually it's like, how about the, you know, maybe they're talking mm. about the Muslim faith and, you know, and they're si trying to talk about the virtues of it. Well, what do you think um, Surah 95 talks about? Or do you agree with that? What do you think that says? Why is that? Yeah, I'll ask him about the, you know, there's things like that. You want to know what they believe in order that you can respond and refute and things like that. But that, let's never say, mm. oh, isn't there a hadith that talks about that? Like you're excited about it. You're a little bit giddy towards it. Oh, I'm talking about the Trinity. Oh, what does it say in that, you know, um, in Sahih Bukhari, mm. Sahih Muslim, whatever. We don't, uh, you know, we don't say, um, I don't know, trying to pick another religious book. You know, does the Roman, well, Roman Catholicism is closer. Mm. And it might even I, I think you're right. I think part of the problem with, with this is that if I was a Muslim, and it's very hard to think what, what you think as a Muslim, and I'm looking at James White and he's spending so much time studying the Islamic religion. Um, he's very popular. He's yeah, very popular. No, the, my, the my thinking would be he's going to become a Muslim. He's eventually going to become a, no it's, as a Muslim. Yeah. That's what. No, I, uh, yeah, we're not know. saying that. No, no, we're not saying. No, we're not saying that. Please <laughs> no. We're not. Uh, we're not saying that. There's been a, look. There's uh, been a couple of uh, videos uh, and a couple of um, you know, kind of uh, Photoshop things done of, I think is ill advised. There were jokes. Oh no. I don't think you know. Don't uh, over jump. Uh, both sides. <laughs> can we calm down? Let's deal with the issue. Yeah. Okay. Some of them are done tongue in cheek, uh -huh. uh, but people are getting outraged and stuff like oh, that. Yeah, yeah. I, I mean, the, the you thing can't go eleven all the time. You know, understand yeah. eleven. If you're constantly going yeah. eleven on yeah. this issue, yeah. gotta yeah. just tone it down a little bit. Yeah. Let's be yeah. rational. I'm gonna. I'm yeah. taking James White's advice yeah, here. Yeah, yeah. Let's yeah. be rational, Absolutely. consistent. Um, no, when I, I, I had a couple of Muslims come to my door a couple of years ago, and before they started to speak, I said, "Can I just ask you one question, or give you a context for the question?" And the context was this. I said, I'm a believer in the Lord Jesus Christ. The scripture promises me uh, an everlasting um, home in heaven. I'm called an heir of God, a joint heir with Christ. And I went through a whole list of gospel privileges. I said, what can you give me that's greater than that? And they looked at each other and looked at me and said, well, nothing really. You seem to have it all in what you said. And and that's, do you see where I'm coming mm. from with all this? Yeah, yeah. We don't need to spend our life studying the Quran. We don't no. need to spend our life studying the Hadiths and, and all these different I think there's a, we think there's, yeah, a, there's yeah. a place where... We, we should have a, some knowledge. But there's got to be, a, it's, I, I'm yeah. not saying the balance is easy. I'll no, be honest. No. I'm studying through the Quran. I'm studying through Ibn As Asad's mm. kind mm. of biography of mm. Muhammad at the moment. Mm. I've been studying back and forth for years. I don't enjoy it. I'll be mm. honest. I don't enjoy it mm. at all. I, I don't really enjoy the research. Mm. I don't think we should. Mm. I think we just do it because, like, okay, here's mm. what they believe. Try and be, represent them as best as po we possibly can. But there's a place for it. I have a rule, right? I've just this is just what I do. Mm. Um, if I'm studying other texts and all that, at least fifty percent of my time is need to be spent in the Bible. Mm. I don't always stick with that rule and things like that. I'm probably massively inconsistent at times. But we need to be in the Word of God. Mm. That's the sword. We can't just get, hey, here's an intellectual argument that I can take from the Quran. That's going to convert mm. them. It won't convert anybody. No. And, and again, we're not against this. We're not saying there's no place for it, but that's not going to, the word of God converts. Because the only way a Muslim is going to be converted 
especially intellectually, is they're going to have to realize and come to the place where the Bible is greater than the Quran. And I know I pronounced that word wrong, and there's no offense. You Which know, word? Qur- Quran, Quran. Uh, no, it's Quran. <laughs> yeah, Quran. Yeah. Uh, and, you know, um, the, the point is they need to see the, the scripture, the Bible as the word of God and the Quran, not the word of God. Uh, and, and that's our, our calling. To, to present the, the scripture as the, and I, I know James White, I'm, I'm not denying for a moment, but again, I think I'm probably going back in my mind to uh, the, the, the different type of reverences that is given uh, to the Quran um, as opposed to... to and we you know, understand why he's doing it. He's yeah. doing it because, look, we're going to give him the complete benefit of the doubt. He's trying to reach Muslims, and he knows mm. that if he uses certain arguments, it's going to put up a temporary wall. We know. I've, I've heard the arguments. I've, I've heard mm. it a nauseam from him. Mm. The problem is it's just not biblical. Mm. Um, I'm not saying talk about Aisha. Mm. I'm saying talk about the scriptures. Mm. <laughs> talk about it doesn't matter, Jew mm. or Greek, Muslim, whoever you are, mm. you need Christ. You're filthy rags. You see, they believe in a workspace mm. salvation. I, heard, I don't think I heard anything of that um, during the two talks. It could be mistaken, but, um, you know, that you believe to your own works, to what you do. You see, it's a self-righteous religion, mm. Islam. It's, I do this, I do that. <clears throat> Talks about a hadith. You know, if you, um, if you die fighting in jihad, you go straight to heaven. And if you don't die in jihad, that's often mm. why they blow themselves up, um, they get to keep the booty. Mm. Now... A lot of these people who are drinking, partying, and all this kind of stuff realize they can't keep the law. They realize they'll compare and it's like, I can't be a good Muslim. Mm. A lot of that's why you often see a lot of these suicide bombers, they're partying, they're mm. you know, 18, 19, 20 years old. They might grow up in a somewhat devout family, mm. but the, mm. you know, and that's one of the reasons that that's one of them say, Oh, it's got nothing to do with Islam because the person wasn't even devout. Well, here's the thing: it's a way out. Mm. It's a quick way out. But whatever the case is. It's a workspace religion to say what I do can earn salvation. See, the God, the God of Islam is not just. The point actually, um, the minister in our church, David Silverstein, makes a lot. The, the, the God of Islam is not just. He, hmm. he lays aside anybody who will die in jihad hmm. and other different things, justice is laid aside. But with Christ Jesus, hmm. justice is not laid aside. Hmm. Justice is satisfied in him. He bore the wrath of God. He took the, the, the punishment that was due to whosoever believeth in him, mm. all the elect from the beginning to the end of time. That he might be just and the justifier of the one who believes in the Lord Jesus. But yeah. I'm sorry, I didn't hear that clear message there. I heard mm. talk about the Trinity in the second one. Mm. I heard talk about, um, I, heard, I heard reference to the gospel, but very briefly. Mm. I think, you know, try as best as their mm. ability to try and represent it. We're not trying here. Yes, I have gone through it. I've making tons, made tons of notes in the first lecture, listened to the second one. <sighs> Can I just say, I, I understand the emotional yeah. argument here, because in the Republic of Ireland at the moment, we're facing inevitably into an abortion referendum, and there's a temptation to join with Roman Catholics to, I say a temptation, um, you know, but the the issue of of abortion is is a very important issue, uh, a very important issue, and yet we must be careful that even on something so serious, we don't compromise the gospel. That's not to say that you know we. If in our community there's conversation or whatever it is, yes, have that conversation you know, and so on. But we don't enter into any sort of uh, formal cooperation with Roman Catholicism or Roman Catholic groups in, in order to oppose abortion. If they want to oppose abortion, um, good. Uh, we oppose it as believers. And we oppose it in the context of faithfulness to the gospel. There, I was just looking there on my shelf and just grabbing while you were talking about that point. They made a point in the book that was published, Evangelicals and Catholics. I go back to that point because one of the things that James White has been saying on his, on his Facebook especially, that this is not like what the liberals are doing. You know, mm. This is not us laying aside and being complete. I can't remember the exact words he used. 
Um, we're not laying aside the gospel. We're not compromising. We're not doing what the liberals are doing. Mm. This is different. This is mm. the point that's been made. Um, and I remember one of the the introduction to evangelicals and Catholics together just jumped into my head there. Um, this is on page, this is the Roman numerals, page, page 11. At the same time, both of us were frequently approached, and this, just to give you a bit of context here, this is written by Chuck Colson and Richard John Hughes in May 1995. They said about this, uh, can we at least just agree that Chuck Colson and Richard John Hughes, they're ecumenists. Hmm. And again, I'm not saying that they're in the same level as them. I'm, I'm saying... Let's just hear what they say from an ecumenical point of view, right? At the same time, both of us were frequently approached by evangelicals and Catholics who had been finding one another as Christians and brothers and sisters in various activities, notably in the pro-life movement and the charismatic renewal. Hmm. So these things brought people together, hmm. say the, and they did talk about cooperation many, many times during, yes. the, during the talk. Yes. What brought them together in in the obviously it's a little bit different because there's a difference between our relationship with Rome, Rome's an apost you know, and now a synagogue of Satan. Uh Islam was never part of the church. Mm. It's a little bit different. Mm. You know, that's why, you know, the, the, the Antichrist cannot come out of there because he's he's not um he was never part of the church. But I digress. But if you if you look at Nobody, see, nobody, can we just at least, I'm going to get back to, I will get back to the talk in a sec. We're, this segment's taking a very long time. I'm sorry about that. But nobody says, aha, I will be deceived. Mm. Does anybody say that? Mm. You know, right before somebody falls, all right, I'm going to fall now. I'm going to have a very mm. bad time. No, they mm. always defend themselves mm. like crazy. Mm. And their heart gets harder and harder mm. and harder. Mm. Yeah. Let's continue with the, go back to the talk. So how in light of that do we get along? That's why we're here this evening. Dr. Cotty, sir, you honor us with your presence. Thank you very, very much for being here. Welcome, priest of Baal. You honor us with your presence, said Elijah never said. Mm. You know, I, I mean, if that does not trouble you, I don't know what to say. With us. Thank you for inviting me. It's an honor and a pleasure to be here. Um, I hope this is the first of many future dialogues. Uh, one of the main motivations for us to come here really was that, um, and I was expe expressing this uh, to um, uh, uh, James, should I call you Mr. James, Reverend James? James is, that... is just fine. Okay, James, and you can call me Yasser, you don't okay, have to be right. formal, the Dr. Qadi here. Um, so I was expressing to James that uh, in, in the interfaith dialogues that Muslims typically end up having, it's with people that I would consider to be a different type of Christians than, than the predominant strand here in Tennessee, if you get what I'm saying. In other words, most of the people that are engaged in interfaith are really not minding the fact that we have differences in theology. Uh, they don't really express any type of discomfort with us. They're very nice to us. Uh, the fact of the matter is that there is a segment of this population that has a lot of misconceptions and a lot of fears. And when we try to dialogue with them, we find that they're not really that interested to come to the dialogue table, to the interfaith events. They, they, they have these notions that um, translate into misunderstandings, translate into misconceptions. Mm -hmm. Can I just say that, you know, James White said this is unique. What Dr. Kadia said is this is a, an, an ongoing program for Muslims. This is not new for them. This is their program, interfaith dialogue. And, you know, again, the... the, the the even the the title interfaith it's putting the two on the same level it's, I, it's, i've it's, never it's, heard Christ, conservative christians in my life defend in, I, I never mm, thought i'd mm, be saying there are christians mm, and i can name the names who i've had massive respect for or a little less respect now if i'm being completely honest defending this and saying mm, it's okay or mm. we're quibbling Hmm. Interfaith. It's it's. it's is this horrific. quibbling? It's can, you, can you actually say that this is now? I'm talking. I'm I'm cherry picking some of the more nicer comments. And look again. You can't, we just got to get beyond Brandon House and things like that. Look, no disrespect to Brandon House or anything like that. Um, you know, like we don't. You know, it, it's not about a baseball team. You know, gotta you know, everything Brandon House said is correct. 
I don't know. I didn't mm. listen to. Mm. I've been mostly listening to this. I, I listened to a little bit here and a little bit there. Um, I'm not a Brandon House listener. I'm not against him in any way, shape, mm. or form. Mm. I appreciate what he does in the Lord and things like that. But it's just sad that it's just been attack the messenger, attack the messenger, attack the messenger. Everything's been made about mm. Brandon House personalities. Mm. Can we deal with the text? Can mm. we deal with Second John uh, mm. chapter one verse nine to eleven? Mm. Can we can we look at what look look what the reformers said? Like just on on their uh, just really really quickly. Um, fifteen ninety nine, really short little note that it had in Second John uh, verse uh, chapter one verse uh, ten. We ought to have nothing to do with them that defend perverse doctrine. Um, and if you if you look at the the, the commentaries of John Brown of Haddington. A Reformed Baptist in the shape of John Gill. I'm sure lots of people have these commentaries in, in your collections. Albert Barnes a, was a 19th century Presbyterian. Matthew Henry. What the Matthew Henry said, there are many ways of sharing the guilt of other people's transgressions. It may be done by culpable silence. Even if you remain silent in the face of error. Sadly, we're, many of us are guilty here, unfortunately. Indolence. In indolence, uh, my, my pronunciation is all over the place. Unconcernedness, private contribution, public countenance and assistance, inward approbation and open apology and defense. Mm. The Lord pardon our guilt of other people's sins. We can participate by just saying, You've got, look. Those who are defending James, right? James White. If you have not thought about it prayerfully on your knees, if you're not sure and your, your inkling is to run to the defense of James White, just cannot just make people just shiver just a little bit. Mm. Take your time. Go through this. What does Second John uh, chapter 1, verses 1 to 9 talk about? Things like that. What are we called to do? Is he violating these? Because here's the thing. If you are defending him, you are participating. Yeah, there's a huge response. There's a huge responsibility on his supporters because they will have a greater influence. Humanly speaking, they will have a greater influence on him than we will. Yeah, and I think your plea is is very appropriate uh, because his friends need to come alongside him and address the the concerns that they must have about this. Well, I don't know if there's been a bit, there's been people who've been friends with him over the years of kind of, I don't know what's happened in certain situations. There seems to be a lot of breakdown of certain friendship that can happen. Look, mm. and people can be innocent and things like that. I don't know, but there's a lot of people who were um, big supporters of him who have gone the opposite direction. Mm. Uh, I can name a couple of them, but people have worked with him. Uh, I don't agree with all their tactics and all that. I'm not saying, hey, this is the guy to go to or anything like that. But I think he's been warned, but I don't know if he wants to hear it. And one thing that just kind of scares me is, just say somebody is, um, you know, uncharacteristically critical, or say of me, and just kind of say, you know, just maybe email him or something like that. Okay, can we calm down a little bit? No, if somebody keeps repeating and repeating mm -hmm. and repeating and mm -hmm. kind of, become a bit of trouble, okay, then unfortunately they have to be removed from my Facebook mm. and stuff like that, just mm. for the peace, mm. general peace, that's why I do it. Mm. I'm not, look, I'm sorry for people on Facebook because I don't know everybody personally, I don't know, you know, unless I do this, it's just going to be mayhem, and I know that from, from uh, years of being on social media, you just kind of have to um, rein it in sometimes. Mm. But, um, what was my point again? <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's been a long day after work. Mm. Um, I just wish, right, can we just get back to the issues and we just look at, forget about me, forget about Mark, forget about, uh, even forget about James, I, you know, I know it, obviously he needs to repent here, but the thing about it is, I think there's something even more concerning. I am scared, I fear for the church if this mm. is allowed to go unchecked. Mm. This is going to set a precedent. You've got major, major influential people who a lot of reform people especially have great respect for. Mm. And I'm not saying that they don't deserve the respect. You know, mm. Faithful years of Christian ministry. Yes. Yes. There's a danger of becoming all undone. Mm. There's such danger. Look, if you're a prominent... No, it doesn't matter how prominent you are. You could have a you know, 
tiny influence and barely anybody listens to you. Can we not, like, let's not run to the defense of our friends. How many, let's be honest, how many church splits have been caused mm. by, my buddy says this, mm. or all this, mm. we've seen it all. Mm. And, and sadly, this also plays out online. Mm. I'm just saying, take a step back. Don't run to the fence. I mean, I wish people got this passionate about Christ. Hmm. I, I, you know what I mean? I, it just hmm. seems to be, hmm. I don't know. I, I could be ranting for another hour, so we're going to go back <laughs> to the talk. And, you know, it takes two hands to shake. You know, you can't just shake a hand that's not extended to you. So it's very important that people understand we are committed, the both of us, to our faith traditions. Our commitments are not going to be watered down. But that doesn't mean that we can't get along and have genuine, genuine love and care and concern for one another right here and now. That doesn't mean that we can't live together as peaceful neighbors. That doesn't mean that... Well, I don't want to... And the, the argument probably be said, you know, that you can take different contexts in this. But when the Quran says, do not take the Jews and Christians for friends, they're friends of each other. And that Muslims are the greatest of all creatures. Hmm. I know... White knows about that hmm. verse because he talks about it in his book. Now, I'm not I'm gonna talk about this in another show, but he's been aware of Cadi going back to 2013. I was actually reading today, I went back over uh part of his book and he was talking about um Cadi and um one of the, you know, kind of pretty troubling quotation from him in his book on uh, I think it's Hadith Science or something like that. But he knows that he's from the Wahhabi. Well, this is what this is the footnote. This is a footnote. I can't remember what yeah, chapter. Yeah, he, he mentions in, in the response that he that he did that he's aware of the connections. So that's that's true. Yeah, I don't want to get off in a dump. Yeah. You know, like, here's the thing. Again, we would have the same. I would have the same. I, I think a lot has been, and there is legitimate national security issues here. Hmm. Honestly, but it's not the primary thing. No, the, he can, he can be the most peace loving Muslim on the planet. Yeah. No, the spiritual issues are are much more important. Oh, much more. Much more important than, and and again, this is where it's raising of the from wider point perspective, raising the temporal over the eternal, mm. and and that's the problem here. It's one of the the big problems with the whole mentality of this dialogue that the temporal becomes like, how are we going to live together? How are we going to get along? Who are we going to have come alongside us? I know I'm jumping ahead now. You know some of the quotes that you know things that are said. This is an elevating of the temporal. You know, mm. the gospel of the, of the New Testament is continually bringing us face to face with Judgment Day. And that's really the only thing that matters. That's, that's the governing principle. It's not what happens day to day. In fact, the Lord Jesus said, if you love your life in this world, you will lose it. So we're not trying. I mean, Dr. Caddy again says, let's not make uh, this a hell on earth. I mean, in, in some ways for the gospel, it, it's better if it is a hell on earth. because I come not to bring peace, yes, but a sword. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. Because even, can I mention Northern Ireland just briefly? Yeah. During the troubles in Northern Ireland in the 70s and 80s, far more people were being converted in the midst of the troubles than now. We have a time of quote-unquote peace in Northern Ireland. And, and, the, and, and the we're gospel, not saying we want to no, go back to the troubles no, no, again. No, no, just to, <laughs> no, but it, it's yeah. this idea that we... We need to promote, you know, love, peace, and harmony. And all of us want that. But look that. at the spiritual state. Yeah. I mean, again, the, the peace side of it's been wonderful. But look what's happened to Northern Ireland mm. since the agreement. I'm not saying that's all to do with the Good Friday mm. Agreement or anything mm. like that. But the spiritual state oh, of Northern awful. Ireland, it's just the decline. Mm. I mean, you'll, yeah, mm. you'll get a bunch of churches that say, hey, I believe in the Westminster mm. Confession. Probably you like, won't know anything about it. Mm. Or... It just seems to be a bit of a, a pride thing, mm. um, or what, whatever the case. It's become cult- to such a speed, mm. it's scary. Yeah. In, su- in such a short amount of time, in one generation, you've got like um, Northern Ireland going from being very, very conservative mm. to being their daughters, mm. their sons, mm. marching in the gay pride parade. And and the thing is, that was all based on, let's just get along. Mm. And again, of course we want peace. Of course we don't mm. want the blow. That's yes. you know what happened in Northern Ireland was horrible. We never want to go back to that. But we cannot say we cannot say we're going to take temporal peace here, mm. 
and put the gospel way down low. We can't just say, oh, we're going to pragmatism. You know, it might quote unquote work mm. short term. Yeah. Like Moses struck the rock. Was it the second time he was spoke? Was, he was supposed to mm. speak to the rock? Mm. You know, Moses mm. would probably think from that example, oh, well, you know, I just, mm. I just did what I did the last time. That worked. Mm. I don't have to listen to God. Mm pragmatism is it's it's so dangerous and again i can i can completely because even in you know there was moments in in even watching those two presentations that you can enter in momentarily the emotional side of it and, and yes on a human level muslims are against same-sex marriage muslims are against um uh, abortion, and you think, yeah, it makes sense for us. To, Years ago, this would have made you know, complete sense yeah. to me. I'm like, why not? You, you, absolutely. Only a bigot yeah. would be against this, but wouldn't it, they? But it, but it made sense to the to the king of Israel to unite with Jehoshaphat. Yeah. You, you know, we know what happened there. And Jehoshaphat you, you, wasn't a terrible king. No. What, no, did, what one did God the, do one, at one the of, end? One of the good kings. One of the good kings. There, wasn't, there weren't many. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but, I mean, and then look, mm. what God yeah. destroyed his works. Uh, and the prophet Micaiah said to the to the the king of Israel, if it was not for Jehoshua, I wouldn't even look in your direction. I'm paraphrasing now. I, I wouldn't even recognize you. Yeah. You see, that's what the prophet of God does. Um, that's not saying, again, we have to be careful because our words will be taken, you know, misconstrued. We're not saying we should speak, you know, necessarily that way to Muslims, but we, we need to realize that like, they are the enemies of Christ spiritually. If they're friendly to us, we'll be friendly. It is, yeah. and, yeah. and it should be. I again, we condemn utterly mm. the people mm. who say "newcom." Mm. Oh, you know, I hate the spirit of groups that claim to be Christian get in Muslims' face, try to rub it in. Mm. Okay, mm. they're whatever, but mm. you know, it can't be like, "Oh, we got freedom of speech and all this." This is not the spirit. You know, mm. we have got to lay down as as Paul did our freedoms in Christ. Say, mm. we have these freedoms. We have freedom of religion, freedom mm. or whatever in the, in the land. Are we going to just use this, those things to mm. flaunt what we can do and what we can't do? No. We are, t for for the sake that they will come to Christ. Mm. Absolutely. And, and very but this is yeah. not the answer. Yeah, no, no. And very importantly, our application of gospel principles is not to be governed by the events in the world. Very important. You know, we We've seen that in the evangelical world where people, you know, interpret the book of Revelation by the newspapers, you know, and the problem is, you know, mentioning the man who drives through a bunch of, mud, which is awful, and killed one person and at least 10 people in a hospital, tragic. But our observance of the gospel is not to be interpreted by these events. These, these events are awful. In fact, all this should do is heighten our commitment to the gospel as the only answer. We should try man. and reach the Muslims more yes. because of this. Yes. Because we're saying, okay, there's more yes. danger around, and yeah. they might have a shorter life yes. or whatever. Yes. If, you know, yeah. You know, yeah. We, you know, oh, yeah, we can, make the most of every, every opportunity. The Lord Jesus in, in Luke yeah. 13, you know, applies the, 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 the tragic events of the Galileans and, and the Tower of Siloam, uh, but except ye repent, ye shall all likewise perish. It's applying these... And, and there are opportunities for us. You know, he's saying, right, you know, we don't want to have fear of the Muslims, okay? Like, he seems to be, like, representing, mm. you know, Yasser Qadi as a kind of, okay, a peaceful, moderate, mm. all this kind of stuff, okay? We'll take it for granted that he mm. is, okay? But what about the jihadi violent one? Mm. How about witnessing to him, too? You see, mm. I'm just wondering if we're going to be consistent on mm. this. Good point. Yeah. And they're enemies of the gospel. Is there, mm. is, is Qadi mm. better in the eyes of God mm. than the jihadi. Now, from a human perspective, let me be clear, from a human perspective, of course, you know, um, if he, and you know, we're just taking him at his word now, I'm going to talk about him more, mm. the different mm. connections in another show. I want to keep this separate. But why, why are we kind of saying, you know, surely we should be trying to reach everybody, regardless mm. of what they believe. If, they, if they're Satanists, share the gospel with them. Mm. If they're Roman Catholics, who want to bring back the Inquisition and want us all dead, share the gospel with them. Um, you know, be like Stephen. Mm. The Jews were pretty rough towards him and mm. violent. Mm. Mm, I can't talk to you. You're too, you're too violent. Mm. So the fact that they're, you'd say, it, to a certain extent, whether he's a moderate or not, 
from a spiritual point of view, from an eternal point of view, is mm. a is somewhat irrelevant. Mm. But uh, you know, we shouldn't. There's extremes. You know, we battle a lot. Of, you know, people quote we battle a lot against flesh and blood. So therefore, I don't care about. You know, mm. we're gonna let. Um, we don't care about the, you know the nation and stuff like that. There's a balance. These things are important, but they're far less important than mm. the proclamation mm. of the gospel. Let's get back to <laughs> our talk. <laughs> our children, or I guess in my case, my children and his grandchildren, because you're talking about his <laughs> grandchildren, uh, that they can't get along and play together. Because you see, theology is one element, yes, but there are other elements as well to being a human. And for me and for James, theology is the most important. That's what I like. We're not going to water... There's other elements, but it's more important. Which is it? But there's a lot of this throughout the talk, talking out both sides. But we can we can continue with this. That down. We are very committed to our faith traditions. I passionately believe in my religion, and so does James. And I do not doubt his sincerity. I do not doubt his intentions. I do not doubt his commitment to his faith. And I know that he feels the same about me. So if we can get along and have a fruitful dialogue and conversation and show that, you know, it's okay to disagree, even if we disagree passionately, I don't have to hate him. I don't have to, to feel... F I think we both agree here. It's not mm. one or the other. Mm. You can passionately disagree and <laughs> maybe not continue the conversation because the other guy blasts. You love them, you keep praying for them, and if maybe another opportunity presents itself, mm. great. But it's not an either or, hmm. and it's again, it's setting up a straw man. Fear against him. I can wish for guidance for him, and he can wish for guidance for me. One side of me can feel a sadness or a remorse that he's not fully there yet, but I can still break bread with him, like we did today for lunch. We had a, a great lunch together. He we likes can... really spicy Mexican, by the way, just so you know. <laughs> <laughs> Ethnically, I'm Indian. I can't help liking spices, so it's like... <laughs> Uh, we, we can break bread together, we can crack jokes together, we can watch Monty Python together. So, it's... Yeah. <laughs> okay, sorry. Can, uh, that, that needs to be addressed. Yeah. That's disgusting. Yeah. That is vile. I, I, or you said this, I, I, I forgot really, about this, actually. I really hope that that didn't happen. I, I'm ho I, I hope he's completely lying. I, I just yeah. hope it's just a stupid joke and... Mm. But from White's reaction... Yeah, it doesn't look like it's no, like a, it's, it's very concerning on 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 a personal level. Monty Python, for those of you not aware, is the most blas one of the most blasphemous things. I don't know they were trying to ban it like twenty thirty years ago from British yeah. television. Yeah, I mean I, I haven't seen any of the movies, thankfully, um, but I know enough about them that they are really. I know you were converted later in life, so maybe you did see the movies, but you know I uh, saw bits of it. You know, to yeah. be honest, even even when I was not a Christian. Mm. I felt uncomfortable watching it, yeah. and I've been I've been involved in all sorts of weird stuff like Satanism and everything else. Mm. But I watched those, and I was like, "Oh, that's yeah. that made me feel uncomfortable as a kind of a uh, anyway." But I know that they, it is some of the most blasphemous stuff that if you can watch through that and think it's funny, they mock God. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, of course the Muslims gonna like when they mock God. Come on. In in fact, I was only told. I I, I actually I, no actually I don't even want to repeat uh, what I was told yesterday of what happens and. But I, I think most people know. But people yeah. know. I mean, yeah. look, I remember. I think I watched it maybe a year ago. It was, it was a, there was a clip from a debate that went on about you know it was about freedom of speech and keeping Monty Python hmm. on the air because there was a I think there was hmm. concern like people wanted it. He banned. I think it was. Mm. I can't remember the exact context of it all, but I remember. I mean, no, it Ma is very, Monty it, Python was like was like it was the most crude, crass, vulgar thing of its day. Mm. Okay, mm. it's kind of tame now mm. in comparison. Mm. Yeah, I, I I just hope I just hope we're gonna give. Mm. Him, oh, I'll give him too much of the benefit of the doubt. I don't get what's funny about that. Um, anyway, I don't, I, don't, I don't know what to say. I really don't know what to say here. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Always look run on the away, bright side of away. life. But um, it's, it's... And that's... There, okay, now I probably... Apparently, that song, Always Look on the Bright Side of Life, was sang in the context of the crucifixion. Is that the life of Brian? I think so. 
you know, and I won't, you know, um, at least in, pause it, for a bit so I can vomit. Yeah. Anybody, yeah. You know, so I mean, and I, I don't know if the, I, actually I don't know if that's a hundred. I've been told. I that, yeah, it's been such a long uh, yeah, time ago and that I don't honest. know. But you know, it's. Um, Do you know? To be honest, I, I, <laughs> I remember thinking, you know, that was kind of a cutesy song until I think it was years ago. I was thinking newly converted. I was converted maybe a year, six months, and then they put the video in the background. And I was like, that's what it's about. Hmm. Hmm. What? Now I'm sure we would be accused at this moment of being really, you know, but I, I, I think how any true believer, never mind a, an elder or a pastor, could we're not, not splitting see hairs the, about no. him going watching a superhero movie. Yeah, this is just it's just rank blasphemy. Yeah, we're not like if if it was like, hey, we've watched Captain America together. I wouldn't care. Why, whatever, move on. But I think it's part of the culture, and, and, and I'll speak as a Reformed Baptist now. One of the things that grieves me about the, the general Reformed Baptist world is there can be a, an underlying irreverence in just the way things, and I, again, I'll, I'll be raked over but, the calls but, for this but, one, but, but like, there, there can you, be. How can you claim this is Christian liberty? Oh, it's a Christian mm. liberty. What, to mm. watch blasphemous stuff? Yeah, yeah. Can, no, can you make that no. kind of argument for pornography? Mm. <laughs> no. you know, it's like, oh, you're being judgmental. Mm. Um. Mm. Yeah. Set no evil thing before your eyes. I mean, yeah. I, 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 you know what? We we have to remember. I think, as you said, is that we don't know. I don't know. I'm just like, yeah. okay. Here's and, the thing. And, and we maybe, don't know. Yeah. Maybe yeah. maybe James White needs to comment on that. And you know, his, his reaction clarify. is not great. No, no, he should like, like maybe no. the guy cracks a joke and whatever. But yeah, you know, you know what? If just say right, let's go hypothetical. He never watched it. You never mm. watch this vile, blasphemous material, mm. and Yasser Khadi made a, you know, a silly joke, right? Yeah. Okay, mm. you should take him aside, and and just say, no, 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 we need to stop. Well, here. I would go for it, and I would say that James White should have said at that moment, yeah, we didn't actually watch Monty Python yeah, yeah, together. True, and, and that didn't is, happen. And this is the reason. But he's saying, run away, just move on because to the next thing. Could you imagine James White jokingly said, "Oh, and we 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 read the Satanic verses together," as a joke? You, you know what I mean? Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah, 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 you yeah. know, like, it, it, and and this is oh. again is a is the example of what we said earlier that there can be a, a sleight of hand, almost um, joking about the Christian faith and about Christ that would never be tolerated the other way around. We don't know. Like, I don't like. We're not making a judgment on the mm. spiritual state and all this kind of stuff. I don't like when people put in quotation marks. You know, like Christians. Uh, you know, in inverted commas and things like that. Mm. We're not talking about this whatsoever. But there's just, look, come on, there's no, he's not in a good place. He's just not. Um, at no, best, from an, from an objective at best point he's of backslidden. View. From a, an objective point of view, you would have to, again, we can't judge his I don't, soul. I don't know, I haven't a clue but about objectively, that. Objectively, uh, objectively, yes, I, I agree. Just like, if somebody, like, there are times, right, people at work will say something in color, and there's times it grieves my soul. It makes me mm. want to weep. Mm. But I don't laugh back at it. Mm. I take no pleasure. I get greed. Sometimes I don't say stuff when I should. I get it, all right? There's times when we just kind of go, don't know what to say right at that very yeah, moment. Yeah. I get it. I completely get it, right? Yeah. And there's times where I failed in this area many times. So I'm not talking about, you know, I'm going to, you know, whatever, you know, he maybe. You know, maybe we're making you know going on about this too long, but mm, yeah. the thing is, right? I just wonder about somebody's to laugh at it. Mm. That it's yeah. funny. Mm. Um, it it obviously took him by surprise. I mean, it's clear it took him by surprise. But he was like kind of put the f finger up to his lips as in yeah, shush, yeah, don't talk about yeah, that. Yeah. I mean, if he didn't, it just looks horrible. Hmm. And that needs to be cleared up. Whatever yeah. the case, James, yeah. if you're listening, on a personal level, on a you personal just, level, you just have to clear to be... it up because yeah. if that look, here's the thing. I I think. I mean, I hope. I mean, I hope. It was could you a... like? Could you imagine if yeah. you had another elder in your church and mm. you found out he watching my my Python mm. and joking about it? Mm. What would you do? Uh, um, yeah. yeah, let's get real yeah. about this. Yeah. Now, now that's up. He's in. A, yeah. He's not in our church. Mm. But that's a serious issue. Yeah. They've got to take him aside. 
Yeah. Man, I don't, yeah. Even just on that. Yeah. On that, and I don't know. We, I'm, I'm hoping. I hope. I hope. But I, his reaction. But this is where this is where you know, using friendship evangelism. This is where it falls down. I, I remember. It drags you into sin. Oh, absolutely. I remember justifying going to pubs because I was evangelizing my friends. Now, we're not against no, purely no, going to no, pubs no, and all this no, kind of but stuff. I, yeah. I mean, I was using it as an excuse. I'm not saying James White is using it as an like excuse. Like during the day, I'm but, not against going to pubs. You know, you know, but and, and maybe are, I shouldn't have brought it up. people are drunk as an, yeah, yeah. all the time. That's what yeah. we're talking about, yeah. right? But, uh, Late at night. We, we need to be careful. And again, it, 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 more importantly, it comes back to the, the issue of using the divinely appointed means to reach the lost. You know, I mean, even watching, uh, okay, I, we said enough probably in this. So oh, yeah, we, yeah, 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 we have. I yeah, think, we, yeah. We, we said like, enough, yeah. Look, it's, it's out of concern we're saying yeah, it, and yeah. we'll, we'll move on. Yeah. There is also quite a lot that conservative Muslims and conservative Christians have in common. So even as we understand and appreciate the differences, we don't water them down. Let us also look at the similarities so that at least, at least, we can remove the fear and, 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 and distrust and hatred and suspicion of the other. Because it does no one... But he's saying, if you see that there's similarities between Islam and Christian, which is complete Christianity, that's a complete lie, by the way. It's mm. not the same Abraham, not the same Moses, mm. not the same Jesus. So there's no similarities whatsoever. Mm. Um, but that if you agree that there's agreements, then you're not a bigot. That's essentially yeah, what he's saying. Yeah, the only real similarities we actually have are on the moral issues. At, at, from an, at, from, and not even on that because... The, you know, but we don't. I mean, yeah, Islam yeah. allows sex slaves. Yeah. It, I, it, I know. You know, yeah. I mean, they capture yeah. girls. There's, there's these... Oh, you know, I no, get I, into all this. I, I was just referring to, you know, no, same-sex marriage, you know, and, and so on. You see, but, I understand it. You know, yeah. you know f from, a, from a certain point of view, I can understand why people say that. Islam comes across as very moral, but it's mm. not. No. I mean, Muhammad had how, how many wives, how many sex slaves? Mm. Um, yeah, Muslim women are supposed to be mm. Mm. modest, but not sex slaves. Mm. I, I don't even want to get into it here, but there's, it is just the, it's the mm. biggest fraud and disgusting religion. Mm. You see, you know, whatever about the, you know, the, the atheist or the secularist who's just saying, I'm just doing whatever, here it is. Mm. Islam's a bit different. It's presenting itself mm. as holier than thou, mm. but being disgusting mm. and hiding mm. it. Mm. I'm not accusing Yasser Qadi of this. I don't know what he mm. what he believes on this mm. issue. He might disagree with mm. that. I, I pray to God he does. Mm. But I think we make a mistake sometimes in thinking, it, no, it, it's, complete, it's a complete mm. fraud. I don't have time to get into it here. Mm. But there's no, they present, oh, we're for the family and all this kind of stuff. <sighs> what? You know, what family? No. Yeah. Yeah. Any good if my heart is full of anger and fear and hatred of anyone else. It doesn't help me. It doesn't help him. It doesn't help our kids. It doesn't help our society. So really, that's the purpose of this dialogue is just to begin the building of bridges. And I hope that this is the first of, of many future dialogues to take place. So let's tackle one of the first things that causes the problem. Mm -hmm. Uh, when I speak uh, in many places, I say, you know, one of the biggest problems I see amongst my fellow Christians when it comes to Islam is that most of their knowledge of Islam comes from Fox News, or even worse, MSNBC, but you put the two of them together, it's really bad. Yeah. Um, so I don't want to dwell on this too much, but Christians are ignorant and they're buffoons and they're getting all their information from Fox News. Now, some might be, but if they're getting their information from Fox News, Fox News peddles a lot of the same stuff. That, and I miss NBC. They're all pro-Islamic. I, I don't really watch Fox News. So I no, it's a mixture. <laughs> Fox News is a mixture, yeah, right? Yeah. There are some people, there are some actual decent ones, uh, yeah. you know. Um, sh but not everybody's like Sean Hannity. Mm. Sean Hannity's one of the better mm. ones. And some of them are mm. leaning towards liberal and all mm. this kind of stuff. And I mean, they're not anti-Islamic, but that's just by the way. But we'll continue. Mm. And so they see pictures they're bombarded mm -hmm. with images every mm -hmm. single day. There's been the truck uh, and the Christmas thing in, in uh, Germany, I think it was, and all the rest of this right. type of stuff. Mm. Got to understand, what is Islam? And okay. why is it that this evening, uh, you uh, right here in this area are one of the, the primary leaders of Islam. 
But there would be people who would say, well, you don't really speak for Islam. Uh, ISIS is more consistent, et cetera, et cetera. Help us to start understanding because you, you remember you called me once. Uh, I think you emailed me once and you were going to be at an event. And you said, could, could you help me out? What's, what's the difference between a Lutheran and a Presbyterian or something along those lines? From your side of things, things look sort of confusing over here. Well, from our side of things, mm -hmm. things look mm -hmm. confusing as well. Help us to understand what is Islam for you? So the way that I feel uh, a lot of times when, addressing, when I'm addressing audiences, um, the example that I give is imagine somebody who's never been to America, never stepped foot in America, never met an American. And their only source of information about America is years and years of watching the Jerry Springer show. <laughs> Let that uh, the, the, the analogy is horrible, but we'll explain it. I hope you understand that, you know, we're, the kind of, he's setting up a trap here, but we'll continue. That sink in. Yeah. yeah. Now, this person has never met or visited or seen, but they're consistently bombarded with a certain type of America. And the Jerry Springer show is American in the end of the day. Yeah, please do. The reality is the Jerry Springer show does represent... Segments of, of America. Yeah. Segments, not a, the entirety, but no, certain segments. I mean... A lot of Americans watch the Jerry Springer show. There's a version of it, like in England, it's called it. Was yeah, it Jeremy Kyle? I think so. It's but... complete trash, but you know, yeah. it's like yeah. Um, but here's the thing. <laughs> I think what he's setting. What he no, yeah. I know what he's yeah. setting up. He's setting mm -hmm. up like, oh, you're only seeing Fox News or MSNBC. They only just show mm -hmm. somebody attacks, and they don't mm -hmm. show the rest of the Muslim yeah. world. In the last, just let's let's just see what we have from the last. Uh, what was it? The last last week. Let's take a look at the world from the last week. From June 10th to June 16th, that's actually not the last week, but there was 40 attacks, 170 killed, 175 injured, eight suicide blasts in 15 different countries. Hmm. I don't hear this in the mainstream media. Actually, if anything, it's downplayed. Now, most of these attacks take, you know, in the last few days, right? There has been, today... In Afghanistan, 29 killed. Nigeria, two killed yesterday. In Syria, two were killed yesterday. Nigeria, two were killed yesterday. We're talking about in the, in the name of Islam. In Flint, Michigan, a police officer at an airport it, it was stabbed in the neck by a man shouting praises to Allah. This is happening all over the Western world. But here's what people don't realize. Oh, that's the only picture you get. This is a microcosm, a tiny sample of what countries like Israel deal with Daily. I'm not saying this is a kind of like Israel's the best in the world and let's fly out Jews out to the Middle East or anything like that. They need the gospel as well. But this is, <clears throat> this has been the Middle East for years. Right after um, Muhammad died, there was a war of apostasy. There was a massive war. They fought each other. Muslims killing Muslims in order to bring all those people who faded away from the Islamic faith and they brought them under the one caliphate. They've always fought each other. There's always been disunity. There's always been, no, no, we're the right caliphate. We're the right caliphate. There's never been, a, you know, they, they agree in violence. They mm. agree in certain core, mm. but they might disagree. The Muslim Brotherhood may say, okay, mm. we're going to get the caliphate out of Egypt mm. and whatever mm. else. But what I'm saying is this is easily demonstrably For a guy who studied it, for as long as he claims to have studied it, this is a lie. I'm sorry, but this is a lie. You can go back over the last year. Belgium, you know, Belgium was a suicide nail bomber, but it was stopped. It was prevented. Somalia, Afghanistan, France prevented suicide bomb attacks. Um, Iraq, Nigeria, Afghanistan, Egypt, daily almost. And we're talking about, right, you know, people will talk about, obviously, the horrendous attack that took place, the last few horrendous attacks that took place in London, that that's all. There are daily in Thailand, Mali, Egypt, Nigeria. We've got groups like Boko Haram who've claimed um, allegiance to ISIS. This is either this guy doesn't know what he's talking about or it's dishonest. And let this thing in. Since, since Ramadan started, right? This is day 27 of Ramadan. There has been 152 attacks. 
1,389 are dead in the name of Islam. And this guy wants to whitewash it. If you understand what I'm saying. And that's the only image they have. Now, if you, they meet an actual American, this uneducated foreigner will think that he knows everything about America because he's seen over and over and over and over again, years and years of episodes, right? Of a show that portrays things that are atypical in America. But they are a part of the land known as America. That's the way I feel when I uh, approach congregations or, 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 or audiences or I lecture in college, I'm a professor, that I, I, we have to begin with this, with this notion that obviously the primary source of information about a religion should be the broad mainstream people who follow that religion. So if you haven't... Can we just comment on that? That's complete mm. nonsense. If you take the average Roman Catholic... <laughs> They don't know anything about transubstantiation. So, so that means, That's like saying transubstantiation. Yeah. yeah go ahead. So that means if he's been logical, <laughs> he should say of James White, actually, you don't represent Christianity because you're you're on on you know you're well, the not liberals in the are, yeah, you're not oh, number is. Yeah, yeah. So the religion should only be if he was being consistent to use the the term that's been used. Uh, James White's irrelevant. Yeah, because he's because, a tiny minority. Yeah. He's a Reformed Baptist. Yeah. How um, many of those crazy yeah, people are there? Yeah. You know what I mean? yeah. Tongue and shake, I know you're. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> just in case anybody's <laughs> only listening to this part, okay? Oh man, I've I've never in a in a show had to say so many times. By the way, I'm yeah. Anyway, so I don't know what to say. I mean, look, go to those websites that you know. These claims are false. We're going to go through this in another show. Anyway, we'll continue. Visited a mosque. If you haven't socialized with a Muslim, then. You really need to understand what you see on television is but the Jerry Springer equivalent. It is but one, you know, minuscule strand. And I don't even know how else to say this other than the, the, the Islam of ISIS or the Islam of terrorism is not an Islam that any Just, one of us in this audience has grown up with. I, I think, uh, you know, I think this is a fair comment. The Jerry Springer show exists because of the moral decline of America. ISIS... There's a reason it's popular. Yeah. And ISIS exists because of the philosophy of Islam. And, and, and that's... And I'm using his equation. And, and that's the reality. But he's going cl to claim later, nothing in 1400 mm. years of Islamic history has anything ever been like a, a ISIS. Yeah. That is easily... Not one killed because of Surah 9-5. Which is no, a, a it's, bar it's, no. bar it's barely used, it's not used that much, and it doesn't apply today, no. apparently. No. Um, how about wherever you find them? It's not, um, how would I put it? It's not just narrowed down to the Arabian Peninsula. Wherever you find them. Mm. And often, like Muhammad himself was the guy who broke the, the treaty and everything else like that. But we're not just basing our views on those who say Islam is violent. Or teach violence. Yeah, there are Muslims. There's even a, a Muslim, I can't remember his name off the top of my head, Sheikh um, Awadi. I don't know how you pronounce his name actually properly. He's a, he's, a, he's a Sheikh in Melbourne, Australia. And he has been very vocal in Australian media, getting a lot of attacks from Muslims as well, spat at and everything else. Um, he hasn't said that. Other media has said that. They've seen the, the abuse that he gets. He's, But here's the thing, right? I think... This guy, this imam in, in Melbourne, Australia, from what I can see, he seems to be, I actually think he's a peaceful, uh, because he's actually saying, no, the, the problem is the Islamic scriptures. Hmm. Came out and said that. I played hmm. in this show a couple, of, uh, a couple of episodes ago. And I think he's genuine. Here's the thing, right? It might be tempting to get that guy in a dialogue. Let's talk about hmm. exposing Islam and all this kind of stuff. He needs the gospel. Hmm. Regardless of how peaceful he is or whatever mm. else. Anyway, like to be honest, <laughs> those people who are properly peaceful. You just see, it's just like the liberal Christian, mm. they'll pick and choose and say, you know what, mm. we need logic. He actually said in an interview, we need logic to govern, not Sharia. He didn't say that. And interestingly enough, as well, uh, scripture and history shows us that it's generally not the nice people who come into the kingdom. Christ said it's the harlots and the publicans. 
that will enter the kingdom of heaven. So if we're really trying to... It's really tempting to, to witness yeah. to the nice guy yeah. across the road. We all want the nice people. And you can share the gospel. Yeah. Obviously, share the gospel with him. <laughs> Megiddo <laughs> Radio says, only share the gospel with horrible, horrible people. And if they're talking to you, they're saying that you're horrible. He knew, okay? <laughs> it's just... just <laughs> Yes, that's taken away from it. But um, mm. oh, I've never put in so many uh, disclaimers <laughs> in my life on a show. But anyway, um, okay, we'll we, we'll continue. Okay, yeah. yeah, we'll probably finish it up in five minutes, mm. and uh, we'll, I'll probably continue this at another show unless Mark wants to drag himself up to. He has to drive. Um, pray for Mark in his church, Iron Reformed Baptist Church, and you know I'm very very thankful that he came up today. I'll be honest, really really thankful. Uh, because I wanted another set of eyes, another set of ears mm. on this issue. I'll be honest, you know, when you're looking at something like this and a lot of the Christian world is going one direction, you just kind of want to go, am I the only person saying this? Am I going crazy? You know, when you see mm. so many people you got so mm. much respect for, mm. and they still have a fair amount of respect for, but it, mm. I'll be honest, it's... Mm. Anyway, we'll continue. Honestly, we have... The, we are just as shocked as you. That's not the Islam of my parents. That's not the Islam of my mosque. This is as alien to us as it is to you. Unfortunately, the problem comes that the perception is that this is the normative or this is the mainstream. And we're going to come eventually in the questions, I guess, to some of the causes of why this is happening. But what exactly is Islam? Well, in a nutshell, very simply, very simply. Islam is the admittance and recognition that there is one supreme God in being who is almighty, all powerful, all loving, all knowledgeable. There is only one God. That is the God of, of Abraham, of Moses, of Jesus, of Muhammad. That the Here he needs to step in. Mm -hmm. But does he? This is where you need to step in. No, that is not true. That God is almighty, all powerful, and worthy of being worshipped and venerated. And, no other and, being is worthy. And the reason he can't step in is because he has handcuffed himself, a uh, bad uh, terminology, but he's said it's not a debate. So therefore, he can't. He's a facilitator, and this is what needs to be understood. And he's teaching. He's, he's teaching an audience. He, he, he's facilitating a Muslim um, scholar to come to uh, promote teach, Islam. Teach lies. Yeah, prom yeah uh, promote Islam at least. Um, to a congregation, and and it, it doesn't matter whether he's sitting in an armchair or, or standing behind a pulpit. It really doesn't matter. If you're a Muslim listening to this. You would see no reason to leave your faith. Mm. None. Mm. Actually, you would see such reverence given mm. to your faith. Mm. It mm. would actually probably strengthen mm. your faith. Mm. Why listening to this? Would you want to leave? Mm. And no, the second night doesn't actually help. Actually, makes it worse, if you ask me, because he had more opportunity. He, he was, it was like here. It's more of a monologue. It's not really a dialogue. It's more of a monologue. Mm. Um, Yasser Qadi. Now, Yasser Qadi spoke for like an hour and thirty, you know, mm. nearly two hours, right? Mm. James White spoke for about an hour and ten minutes um, mm. in the mosque. Now, I just notice that. Yeah, and you've said it a couple of times as well. Mm. There's such reverence been paid for Islam mm. that on the second night, there was almost every opportunity possible to get in a hadith, mm. a Quran verse or something mm. like that. That was mm. on the second night. The one that everybody's, mm. oh, look at the second night. He talks about mm. the gospel. Mm. Yeah, and then drags and, it down. And this is why Martin Lloyd-Jones makes the statement that he made back in the 60s. Because he understood that the gospel is not a discussion. It's not a dialogue. It's not even a debate. It's a declaration. It's a command. Yes. It's a Men command. are commanded to repent and believe the gospel. And There's nothing wrong with once, the word invitation. Yeah. But once we sacrifice that for any other method, we've sacrificed the means, we've sacrificed the, the God ordained method of declaring the king. There's one king. And. He has just declared, and I know it's, it'll be said, it's, it's, it's in the context of dialogue, but he has declared in the Christian church, and I know James White says, and he's clarifying, it's only a building. Uh, and you can use all those, you know, you know statements. There are Christians but, but, in the audience. Yeah, yeah, but he has declared that, that Allah is the one true God in, in a, among a Christian congregation, in a building that's been dedicated to the proclamation of the gospel. One of the arguments that has been used by... Um 
James White is. And I don't agree with this practice, I'll be honest. Um, but I don't see it on, on the same level. So one of his supporters dug up a video from a couple of years ago mm-hmm. of Sam Shimon, mm-hmm. who used to work with James White, who is now Sam Shimon is very much mm-hmm. against James White, especially in the last few months. Um, basically dug up a video of him pra- saying, my favorite Muslim, here's my favorite mm-hmm. Muslim apologist, Shahid Lewis, it was his name. Mm-hmm. And he taught a class in front of an apologetics class. They were all mm-hmm. apologetics students and all mm-hmm. this at a university. So... James White in the program, I think a couple of programs mm. ago, was like, oh, you know, talk, calling out Keith Thompson of Reformed Apologetic Ministries, saying, Keith, where's where's the video on that? You know, because you're a bunch of hypocrites. And mm. so I'm just going to say, look, people have a different view to me on this and will say, mm. okay, mm. that's in front of train, And it is different. Mm. You've got trained apologists mm. who are seeing yeah. how they can respond. I still don't agree with it yeah. based on Second John. I'm, I have to be consistent here. If I'm going to say, right, you know, praising one guy and not, you know, yeah. but I don't see them on the same yeah. level. Does that yeah. make sense? Yeah. Just to clear yeah. that up in case yeah. anybody might I'm bring that up. I'm going to say, again, clarify, I'm not against James White, as I'm sure you're, no. you're not, but I am against this method. Well, I might, look, I might clarify, I've never been a fan. If I'm going to be that, I've never... No, I, I have differences on the, on the textual issues as well. And, but I've you never know. been, I've never really, look, I... I did a refutation. He probably wouldn't even like the shows because mm. it was on infant baptism. But, um, you know, I basically, I, I was about two years ago, I think, I did two shows talking about, it was a debate he did with Greg Strawbridge. And I just mentioned the start. I'm not the biggest fan, but I am said, I just want to stick with the arguments. I just want to stick with his views on baptism and let's go through the claims he makes from history and all this kind of stuff. And I just want to, like, let's test it mainly because he's a well-known person. Outside of that, I've never really talked about him. I mm. never really felt the need. Mm. I just said, okay, this is a guy I disagree with. I don't mm. like his methods, mm. but there's a lot of guys mm. I don't like their methods. I'm not going to go, quote unquote, after everybody, nor do I want to. I don't want to mm. create a witch hunt to everybody I disagree mm. with. But this is serious enough mm. to warrant this. But also in the context of, if he can't receive correction, mm. And it's just the kind of mocking and mm. demeaning mm. of anybody who's standing in his way, um, of going on their Facebook pages and taking, um, oh, what do you call those things, screenshots, mm. and sticking it on your Facebook and start um, mocking mm. and just kind of, you know, just kind of not taking it seriously mm. and just something to laugh mm. off and mm. all this kind of stuff. I mean... That's important, not just how mm. factually your behavior, you're mm. setting a standard for younger Christians. And just mm. to quote James White himself, what mm. you win them with is what you'll win them to. Mm. And if you win them mm. with that bravado and mm. arrogance, you're going to win them to that. Yeah. And we see, we see that among so many today, as among Calvinists, you know, and, and that's uh, Calvinists should be the most humble people on earth. But quite often what we see is, Calvinists being the most arrogant people on earth, and that, and that's that is so that it's is such so, a contradiction. Yeah, yeah. But like, and if people want to kind of really get into the whole, read Joel Beakey's book, uh, "Living for God's Glory." I love mm. that book because mm. it goes through. We kind of mm. like, hey, here's the intellectual tick tick tick. I believe mm. told mm. depravity. Oh, mm. I'm good on that. Mm. How is that applied to the way you live? Mm. How does that apply to the way you treat your neighbor? Mm. I'll give you an example: election. It is nothing to do with you. It is everything to do with God. You realize you would be just as your neighbor had who doesn't believe in God, mm. who hates the gospel, had God not been merciful to you. I would be merciful unto whom I am merciful, it says in Romans 9. So therefore, you're more compassionate. Mm. You're more broken mm. in your concern because you realize, see, it's so easy to go, I made the right decision. Mm. That just puffs you up with pride. Mm. It should strip you. And here's the thing. It just shows you people don't understand election. Election is something you study over and over again, and it strips you of every ounce of Mm. pride, every ounce of boasting. Mm. Oh, man. Anyway, we'll continue. Well, we'll we'll just play a few more minutes, and then we'll Mm. wrap it up. Mm. ...of being worshipped. Islam tells us that uh, 
God continued to send prophets to mankind with the same message. So for the Muslim, the Muslim is one who is uh, following the religion of Islam. For the Muslim, Islam is not new. It's not an Arabian religion. It didn't begin uh, with the Prophet Muhammad. Uh, Moses, Abraham, Jesus, uh, Adam, they're all teaching the same essential message with some fine tunings, but the message is the same. There's one God, love him with all your heart, worship him to the best of your ability and praise God and follow the law and if you do so you shall live peacefully at least heart your heart will be at peace in this world and you shall attain God's kingdom and God's grace in the next world this in a nutshell is Islam that there is but one God the, the this God is worthy of veneration and worship and to be a good person you have to believe in him worship him follow the law uh, uh, obey the commandments and if you do so there will be a life after death and there is heaven or hell uh, where there's accountability in a nutshell Islam is the same uh, religion that Abraham and Moses and from our perspective I guess we'll come to this as well Jesus and the Prophet Muhammad taught it's not something that began a thousand five hundred years ago in Arabia um, I guess I want to talk a little bit about as, as, as being a Muslim, there are certain things you have to do. There's rituals that are mandatory. Uh, I'll just mention. So at that point, right, I'm just trying to play as much of this clip as possible. I wouldn't normally do this in another show, play that much. Um, but here's the thing, right? That's when you interject. Say, no, no, that's not true. He is tr teaching lies. He's teaching the basic. Look, and you have to say, you see, according to the Muslim, Sources according to Islam, it's basically the same message that was taught in the Torah, in the Bible, and things like that. Okay, there's contradictions, of course. The Bible yeah. has been corrupted. You know what this, here's the sad thing. Yeah. Well, I, think, I think this is the problem <laughs> with, with the dialogue because, to use another analogy, James White hamstrung himself because he agreed that it wasn't a debate. It, it, it wasn't, and it, in, in, in fact, Agreement, and this is why making agreements is wrong on this level, because we see in the Old Testament agreements made that, that shouldn't be made, and it leads to all sorts of trouble for the people of God. Um, it, it never should have been agreed that this type of meeting happened because a Christian minister or elder or a Christian, any Christian, should never agree to enter into a situation where was, they cannot stop yeah. and say, no, that is false. But just say it's an honest mistake, just as some people are claiming it's an mm. honest mistake yeah. and all that. Yeah. He's doubling down. Mm. He's going, He's at the moment, he's writing a book mm. with Shabir Ali. Mm. Um, probably going to be the same vein. It's more mm. of a dialogue, not a, not a debate kind mm. of thing like that. Here's my view. Here's your view. Can you imagine, oh, I suppose you keep bringing maybe, up maybe Elijah. Is it possible, is it possible that... He's getting tired of debates? I, I don't know, maybe not. <laughs> no, what he's, like, in uh, is, fairness, is there, is there... he has debated, because I know he'll probably kind of go, uh, has, he's oh, yeah. let everybody know on his Facebook uh, how much she's done. Um, yeah. he, I think we all know what that means. But um, he, he's been, you know, he's, he's debated since then. Hmm. Okay. Which, which, you know, which okay. means That's it me doesn't I'm... matter <laughs> what he's done here. It doesn't yeah. matter. Oh, yeah. You know, here's so, the thing. Yeah. You, you know, here's yeah. the thing, right? If, if, if you... You're obviously a very ignorant person if you disagree with him. Hmm. Because James White is so smart, so clever. I, I find that attitude so scary. Uh, I, I nearly find his supporters... That's what I was going to say. Worse. Yes. I, 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 actually, that was, I, I was thinking of that on, on the way up in the car, that there's a great responsibility, and I think I've already said that actually even tonight, but, you know, a lot of his supporters... Um, promote this his 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 academic his his what he's done. But that even, makes it even, worse. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Not better. His responsibility is had is he increased. just started and made an honest mistake. Okay, yeah. and then he repented and said, "I hold my yeah. hands up. This was silly. I shouldn't yeah. have done this." Yeah. You know what? If he did that, probably gained a bit of respect for him. Mm. But on top, it's yeah. like, okay, I shouldn't have done that. Yeah. But here's the thing: he's doubling down on mm. it. This is not just kind of somebody makes a mistake would jump on them and burn them or something like that, well, metaphorically it's, it's, speaking. It's an object lesson in once you begin down a road where you should never have begun, it's, it's like being on a roller coaster because and every day that passes on this issue, it becomes increasingly more difficult because how can he, humanly speaking, now the Lord can do any, humanly yeah. speaking, how can he turn around now? Because... The, the, Does he look foolish? 
but more than that, he would have to turn around to men like Caddy and say, actually, uh, this whole pr- process wrong. is wrong. Sin. And I'm actually a bigot. According you, to Cardi, yeah, like, you know, you uh, like saying, I'm impossible. a massive bigot. Yeah. So now you're setting up a wall. Yeah. It's again, you've J- set up, actually, yeah. it sets up more of a wall to yeah, the gospel yeah. than. Uh, yeah. And, and J.R. Packer, you know, the further he went down the road and others went down the road of ECT and so on, they had to keep going. You, yeah. you, you have to, humanly speaking, you have to keep going. And, and that's the tragedy of this. How hard you do we never, find it if we yeah. go on a certain path yeah. in, our, in our own yeah. lives? To yeah. turn back and say, you know what, what I've been yeah. doing for the last couple of years or whatever, yeah. it, it's incredibly hard to do. Yeah, and there's a line you don't cross yeah. because in all sorts of issues, we can be tempted with sin, we can have heart sins and so on. But when you cross a certain line, humanly speaking, there is no recovery from that. The damage has been yeah. done. Oh it, yeah, absolutely. To, like, and we're yeah. talking about the testimony. We're not, we're not saying you yeah. can't repent or anything mm-hmm. like that and it can't be restoration. Mm-hmm. But there's been such damage especially mm. not just mm. in this but the fallout mm. and the rhetoric and mm. the mocking mm. I mean I mean you know initially it was like oh you're living in a parallel universe how mm. dare you criticize James mm. White look I have I, I this isn't unique to this it's I think it's gotten worse and worse and worse I have said nothing because I'll be honest I've had lots of I have lots of friends who are people I know, at least, um, who think a great deal about him. I don't want to create unnecessary mm. division in the body, but there comes a point when the atmosphere gets so toxic, basically, mm. we have to, mm. we have to speak up. If we don't, this yeah, will be the Calvinism yeah. for the next generation. Because yeah. it's not, a, and, and I said this to Packer, I said this to, to James White in regards to the, the King James issue, and I say it in regards to this. These are not just academic issues. These are pastoral, spiritual issues. And I pleaded with Packer in the mid-90s uh, when I spoke with James White personally over um, dinner. I told him that the, the issue of the text is not just, and, you know, <laughs> Saying some of that, but I, but I appeal to him on the basis of the pastoral, spiritual issues involved in 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 the Word of God, and on this issue in particular, I believe the same thing comes in that we're not. If we were only dealing with academics, if we we're only dealing with whatever you know on an academic level, well, then you know what we're doing now is not needful. But this is spiritual. This is pastoral. This is discipleship issues here. There's there's issues regarding obedience of the gospel. Yeah, if you're talking you know? about academic methodology, it mm. would be quibbling. Yeah. It would be like, yeah. okay, yeah. how you discover this yeah. and what yeah. scientific method you're using for, I don't know, paleography, and you might have a slight mm. disagreement here. Yeah, that would be quibbling. But this is not that. Mm. This is something, it doesn't matter what reformer you go to, mm. and you look at, I'm talking about from history now, Matthew, Henry, the Geneva 1599 translation, I'm just get second John out here, but I mean I've seen horrible treatment been made of this. Get second John out here, uh, verse nine: Whosoever transgresseth, transgresseth and abideth not in the doctrine of Christ hath not God. He that abideth in the doctrine of Christ he hath both the Father and the Son. Now you might say oh, that's a pseudo Christian, maybe okay, you can make that argument, but that's like saying you can never apply Galatians chapter 1, verses 8, 6 to 9, to Roman Catholicism, because mm. it wasn't mm. directly taught. Now, we obviously know that there was directly, at that context, mm. c- condemning the false gospel of mm. the Galatians and stuff mm. like that. But are, is anybody going to argue, well, I've actually seen one person argue, but that's another issue, uh, that that's only talking to the Galatians. Mm. That's like saying, no, the word of God talks to us at all. Mm. It's, it's a kind of ridiculous argument if you're going to say, oh, it's just the Gnostics. If there come any unto you, and bring not this doctrine, receive him not into your house, Neither bid him God speed. Now, this is specifically about, specifically about teachers. Mm. We're not talking about your mm. confused neighbor, no. Muslim neighbor. Invite them in, share the gospel with them. This is not talking about that. Because it's clearly implied they bring not the doctrine, they're bringing another doctrine. And they are actively, actively bringing another doctrine. Absolutely. And here we have a man actively bringing the doctrine of, of Islam into a Christian church. And I, I don't accept James White's answer to that. It's not just a building. 
that is a building that is dedicated. And it doesn't matter what happened in, in New Testament times. It doesn't matter but doesn't that most people didn't have confusion. a building. Yeah. It at least sows confusion. And, and that by itself. Could you imagine the early church bringing you know, the Judaizers into their house meetings so they can explain their, their, their <laughs> doctrines. I mean, it's ridiculous. I mean, the, the what makes the building special, it's 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 dedicated by... We're, 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 and we're not we're, saying superstitious no, about no, the building or we're anything not like talk, that. We're not talking about, the, the, the you know, splashing holy water, or, you know, or, or whatever. We're talking about dedicated in the hearts of God's people. That's what we're... Ta- that's the dedication. It's dedicating to the... It dedicated to the preaching of the gospel of Jesus Christ, and Allah has been called the only true God in that building. Yeah, you don't, like, stick up plays and start using it for, mm. a hey, let's, yeah. you yeah. know, just say it's a church building, yeah. and we're going to, you know, to raise some money, let's uh, mm. start a football game. Mm. Yeah. And people would have a problem with that, right? Well, so, actually, and this is worse. Yeah, oh yeah. No, having, I would rather have a football game. Oh, no, in, I, I, in, I agree. In, 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 yeah, I would rather have a football game. I'd rather play badminton in, in the church and, and you know, remove the pulpit out of the way and have a game of badminton rather yeah. than bringing a false teacher. But like you people know. would have a problem with that because it'd be mm. like kind of diminishing and all that. But you know, because yeah. like we oh, want to yeah. just use yes. this just for this purpose. Yeah. This is not to, you know. It's no, a, no. And again, it's, and it's, it's, it's another red herring to be honest. Yeah. It's just another yeah. red herring. Yeah. But for he that abideth, uh, he that biteth him, God's speed is particular of his evil deeds. Mm. So this cannot be talking about just the Gnostics of the first century. That'd be silly. And like, all scripture is given by inspiration of God and is given for um for profitable for doctrine, reproof, for instruction, in righteousness. All of scripture is God breathed, all of it's profitable, and we just have to see how it's gonna be used. And I'm just we're gonna finish off in a second here, but I mean I've quoted I've quoted from, you know, I don't know if I mentioned John Brown Haddington's quote, but we won't you know he was de- dead against what has happened here. Mm. Matthew Henry. It doesn't matter what reform commentary I come to, none of them say that this is right. John Gill, it doesn't matter who you go to. A modern commentary here, this is um, the notes to the Reformation, uh, the Reformation Heritage uh, Study Bible. It says, Christians should refuse even basic hospitality to teachers of heresy. This does not refer t- to, to confuse believers or unbelieving neighbors, but to people intentionally speaking to spread heresy. Bid him Godspeed literally says to him, rejoice. Speak to him a greeting. To speak a blessing on a false teacher is to become a partner, or to fellowship, and I can say that as well, and that's my own little note, a partaker with him in evil. This may refer to the official blessing of a church on a visiting missionary. Hmm. And again, I don't know, it, it doesn't matter what commentary you go, see, this is the deceit, I, I, Anything I've ever checked, and look, we're not going by commentaries. We're not saying that's the final authority. I think it, the, the, the passage speaks for itself, but you're not just saying you disagree with us. If you're citing with James White here, you're disagreeing with John Gill. You're disagreeing with any sound Reformed theologian that I can find anyway from mm. history. And if we look at verse 10 again, receive him not into your house. How much more is that increased when we talk about receiving him into God's house? Now we know the building. We, yeah, we yeah, know yeah. we know the response. But don't and even I, take him into your house for a cup of tea or something. Yeah, like. you know what I mean. Like it's magnified a hundred times, and I reject any argument that says the church is not the building. That that is a fallacious argument, and it, no believer should accept such an argument. Uh, you know that that is uh, when when in James two two, and I'm not a Greek scholar. James White is. The word used there for the assembly is is the word synagogue, which is taught with the building. You know, it's taught with the building there. Um, you know, so therefore we can rightfully call a building. Uh, you know, we call whether Presbyterians call it the meeting house, but it's a it's a place dedicated to the preaching of the gospel of Christ. And and just because most of the early believers didn't have church buildings. That is irrelevant. It could be a room in a house yes, or something, whatever it is. Yeah, it, it's irrelevant. It's yeah. wherever it is. It could be a field. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. We've had church meetings in, in our home. Yeah. Um, at the moment, we meet in, a, in a, a, a GAA club, which for those who live in America, it's a, 
uh, Irish Sports uh, Centre, but we that room we meet in on, on the Lord's Day, that is dedicated to the, to the proclamation of the gospel. You don't it's share a, it with people playing badminton or no, something no. like that, you know what I mean? <laughs> and, and the thing is, it, it, it's, it, you know, it is the house of God in that sense. It is the house of God in that sense. Yes, we know in a greater sense, absolutely, that we are the house of God. We know that. But that building is dedicated, and that building where these two men are sitting is dedicated to the proclamation of Yahweh being the only true God and Jesus Christ being the only true God. Like even when you lock yourself away in your closet, you're dedicating that yes, space. Yes, We're not making something superstitious no, about no. it, but we're dedicating no. that space, that yes, time, yes, to the Lord. Yes. We could talk and talk and talk about this <laughs> all night, and it's look, it's sad. It's the mm. whole thing is sad. Is mm. we take no pleasure in this, mm. and um, mm. if my sinful heart has gotten in the way of my presentation, I ask mm. for forgiveness. I really mm. do. Um, um, yeah, I've not really been looking forward to doing this show. I um. It just breaks my heart. And, and it should. Um, the problem is that we can, we can, we're so hard that we can actually consider these things without being absolutely brought to our knees. And, and that shows the, the desperate state that people on both sides of the argument can often argue these things out in, in an academic way. And thank God that we, we, we are affected in our hearts by these things because that's uh, my stomach's God, not been right for like days I just mm. it just it grieved me I to be honest I just did not want to talk about this I just didn't want to cover this just it, this is just it's gotten so out of hand it's just yeah I don't know I don't know what else to say it's just we've got to end it here because it's got to end <laughs> sometime Mark, thank you so much for coming. Um, we pray that the next time you're here, we pray that you do come again, um, that it will be in better circumstances, maybe in a more positive topic. Brethren, just let's get on our knees. And um, let's not, even if people are disagreeing with you, let's not tear into people. Let's just seek for... Let's seek to bless our brethren. Let's seek to exalt Christ-honoring doctrine. Pray for those who are disagreeing with us on us. But we have to stand where we stand. There's no other way. It doesn't matter what the vast majority of people are doing. What is your authority? Is your authority men? Is your authority me? James White, you need to repent. Your authority can't be your pastor. Can't be your best friend. It must be the scriptures. And Paul Flynn, may God bless you all.